more interested in MDF than EDM. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The church we got a mandate to get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. All right, a lot to talk to you guys about today. John and Kite's going to walk in here in a couple of few. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Michael Modecki, who's the founder of platebroker.com, because uh, we've talked about the price of vanity license plates, how much they can go for worldwide, why certain plates are so expensive that don't seem to make sense to us, but maybe they're expensive in Dubai. <laughs> And uh, this notion of like domain names in the late 90s, if you could lock on to one that said Ferrari or Shelby or Mustang or something like that, then uh, that would be worth a lot if you were to sell that to somebody. Much like athletes who had a number could sell it. And there, there are stories of athletes with a number and then a new guy gets uh, traded and then he wants his old number, but you have his old number and then he'll sell it to you. He could give it to you, but he'll sell it to you. Yeah, we talked about some of these plates and they were being sold for well, how much were like the most expensive ones? Like millions. millions. Yeah. And he's this this guy, Michael, he's brokered some of those. Those are some of his deals. So and numbers seem to be the most sought after ones. Was that correct? Numbers yes. are like MM was one of them. Yeah, and the number, you can't do a single digit, so I hear, but let's talk to Michael. Michael? Hi, right, so how's it going? Good. So, well, walk us through this, because it's something I've kind of been fascinated with for a while. Sure. Um, you know, plates, the, the resale of plates has been a big deal pretty much everywhere overseas, except the United States. And, uh, you know, because it's essentially the last true, like, one of one item that is guaranteed to be authentic by the government, you know, by, by design and function, it has to be unique. Um, and so in Dubai, they've had these auctions where they've reached astronomical prices. Like the, the world record was just beaten over Easter weekend. Uh, it was $15 million plate. Uh, and the world record, the world record before that stood for 15 years at 14.3. U.S. dollars, 14.3 million U.S. dollars. Um, and so it seems like this industry is just ripe for California and the U.S. And in some states in the U.S. it exists right now. Um, but in California, it's, it's we're like in the, I don't know, like domain name market back in the 1990s. You know, we're kind of seeing the ramp up to something big happening. What was the world record setting plate? What did it say on it? So the world record that was beat, the one that just set the record is the license plate P7. Um, but in, in, and that was in uh, Dubai. Um, the P is actually very small. It's almost like an issue number or an issue, uh, a, like, a, like you would have a, a certain issue of plates. But the number seven, it's very prominent. So a single digit is what commands a lot of money in the UAE. And, oh, yeah, it and just looks like seven. Is there any significance to seven, or is it just a single digit part? It was a single digit part, and I believe the the buyer who they think they speculate it's a it's a French Emirati billionaire, like fifteen fifteen point two billion net worth. It just he, like apparently the guy liked the number seven. A lot of this is subjective, you know. I mean, it may not be worth anything to this other guy, but for someone, they might be a lucky number, or they might you know, be an athlete with a certain number or whatever the significance is to them. Um, that's yeah. What was the most expensive plate sold before that at 14, three or two or three? Uh, that was in Abu Dhabi and it was the number one um, on a series of at least series number five plate. So on the plate, you'll, you'll have a red number five on the side, but it was number one that was prominent in the middle. So would there be like a vanity plate that said Ferrari in Texas and one in California and one in Massachusetts? Is, there's like, you know, a Ferrari for every state in the yeah, union? Yeah, pretty much. Are more Depending states on worth how more? Depending on how many um, letters are allowed on the plate, for sure. And then would like, I would assume a Ferrari license plate in California would be worth more than one in, in Idaho, 
or New Mexico. Yeah, for sure. You look at things like population and the number of cars that are on the road and the amount of money in the state, um, the state's overall culture. Like California is perfect because it's, what, the fifth highest GDP in the world if it were a country. It has 31 million registered vehicles, all that are eligible to put plates on, um, over 40 million residents. And I believe, I believe this L.A. County has almost as much money as the entire UAE. And so when you think of that, like, there's, it's, it's surprising it hasn't happened in, in California. But what percentage of these people are doing it? I and mean, it's not really an answerable question, but I assume people are, some people buy art because they like the artist and they want to hang it on the wall, and then others are doing it for an investment. Mm-hmm. And so they think yeah, I mean, it, if you could get hold of Ferrari in California for a million bucks, you could sell it for five million bucks in 20 years. Yeah. I mean, that's essentially, it's almost like an unintentional investment. A lot of these guys who have held onto their plates for 30, 40, 50 years are seeing the potential that because they've had it for so long, I mean, it's, it's there, there, I don't know if you saw, there was a plate, the plate that says cash. C-A-S-H in California. It's been the same owner since essentially the day that the, that California started selling vanity plates. He went down and bought that plate. And now 50 odd years later, he's, he's selling it for $2 million. And he's one of my, he was one of my first clients. Yeah. It's his initials um, too, Adam. Oh, and it's on a roll. So that may be my dad. I got to check <laughs> into this. I got to open that man's garage. He's got so many rolls in there. I'm not sure if I've seen the cash plate on one. So he bought the cash in 50 years ago. I'm trying to think when these things yeah, came out. 19, I want to say it's 1970, 71 is when, or 72 is when they came out. So 51 years in the same dude, or is he kind of passed it on? Like you can do with season T, you know, it's the, season seats yeah, it's for the, the Yankees. Same, it's the same guy. Wow. Um, he's in his eighties. Now he's retired. Uh, he was a, Silicon Valley attorney came up with, you know, all the dot com guys. And now he's, you know, he's got this plate that's, I think it has to be worth something to someone, especially with, you know, hip hop culture and just the performers and artists all in town. I think cash is a, is a pretty awesome plate to have. And is the actual plate worth anything or is it just the, it's because it's, it's the, your ownership plate. It's the ownership. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the value is in the ability to register the actual configuration. The, the actual tangible plate doesn't mean anything. It's just a souvenir if you can't put it on your car legally. Right, because people will rip them off. I... Right, and that's and I think what's funny now is you're seeing these digital plates in California. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's actually a way to preserve the original, in my opinion. I mean, you keep the original at home and and put the digital one in your car. If they rip off the digital one, it, they just get a essentially a blank Kindle. Does, um, so a, a guy like that would use a guy like you, like speaking of cars, uh, somebody would use Gooding or RM Sotheby's or something like that to sell their car. They would go, I, I want to use your platform to sell this car. You get to wet your beak, 10, 20%, something like that. You get the maximum mm-hmm. amount. He'll set the reserve. Um, if his reserve is too crazy, you'll try to talk him down, right? Yeah, we haven't done an official like open uh, auction platform yet. We essentially just list them for an asking price and entertain offers that come in. Mm-hmm. And essentially, I'm, I'm, I'm the back and forth. And because I have established essentially the, the momentum with this, you know, people are trusting me with the more rare plates. But there's nothing really, it's almost like if there were other agents in in real estate, like, you know, I, I welcome healthy competition if, if someone else thinks they can do it better. But it's more of the idea, like, if, if, you're, if you're representing, I don't know, like Calabasas, and that market does really well and lifts, you know, West Hills and, and Hidden Hills along with it, why not? I think we're all in it to, to benefit together. But this must be... And also, kind of, yeah. No, I also like there are other states that this might be be viable in too. I only know California because I'm originally from California. I've been buying buying plates since I was a, a kid. Um, you know, <laughs> must have gotten so laid a I lot in high school. I follow the rules there. <laughs> well, it, and it also strikes me that it's sort of evolving. Like somebody might want to get 
COVID or Fauci or something. Yeah, what are the what are the trends right now? We'd never heard of in in the mm-hmm. in the you know a two years ago or five months ago. Yeah, like even recently, a, a guy is trying to sell the plate. It says no mask. Right. I'm like, okay, I, I know exactly what that was purchased for. And then another one says, like, rent due. And he was trying to make a, 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 a COVID reference there in, in his, in, you know, such as selling me on, the, on whether or not I could sell it for him. And he's like, this is what I think it's worth. And I always, people always ask me, like, can you give me a ballpark on what this is valued at? And I said, no, because honestly, it's like the art market. It's entirely subjective. Someone may really, really want that somewhere else and the idea is just to get it in front of those eyes and see if uh, there is a transaction there the problem with something like no mask is it's it's great i love it i hate masks i hate it that they lied to us about masks but you wouldn't be able to drive that car through santa monica without getting rammed yeah like if you <laughs> left that thing at a sprouts market in santa monica it would get keyed <laughs> <laughs> for sure, by some fucking Karen. You know where I think they're going? Maybe, I, I, if I was investing in license plates right now, I would just get a few emojis on there. I could see those coming up on license plates soon. That's the way we're all texting now. Or just the word emoji. We have that weird hand thing already in California. Let's just yeah, let's just get some emojis on. Oh, there. we got the hand on the license plate. Yeah, the yeah. Hand yeah there's print. the hand, the hand of the heart, the star, and the plus sign. I think are the options there. Dawson. Hey, Michael, I don't know if you're a Dio fan or not, but back in 2018, Ronnie James, Ronnie James Dio estate uh, auctioned off a bunch of his belongings. They included three license plates, uh, one California plate uh, that said N-I-J-I-2. That doesn't matter. But a European Union plate that said Dio 1. Yeah, do the ones that matter. (laughs) And an Arizona plate that says Dio. And all three of these were on his vehicles Mm. and (laughs) driven. And uh, the bidding, the auction closed all three plates at eight hundred ninety six dollars. Hmm, that seems, that seems like that seems, that seems, that for the seems plates, like an um, it, yeah. You're not actually buying. I don't think you can put them on your car. Yeah, why right. can't you? Well, well not the you, actual license plate, can't. but you have the buy the rights to Dio and then go get a new set of plates, right? I bet. It, right, I bet this is just for the plates. Doesn't that seem like an amazing oh, bargain? Eight hundred dollars. But still, yeah, I kind of depends who you talk to. I guess <laughs> to you, Dawson. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I would say that this this industry for the for the ability to register it. I mean, it's it's a very narrow group, but it's very deep, and so that's why you have probably the same the same group of guys in the UAE who are who are dropping the the tens of millions of dollars on these plates, and there are a lot of guys who admittedly do it. Um, for the resale value. They're flipping them as assets out there. And so there are a lot of people who are buying it as the investment and are holding. And uh, I know, I believe there are guys now in California, at least, who say, I I haven't seen it happen, who say they're they're running like scripts to see when the DMV re-releases plates back into their system. Oh, because somebody's going to die and somebody's not going to renew and then something cool is going to get back into the system. Yeah, just like with um, domain name, uh, like, uh, like there's a company called Dropcatch that it, it, they monitor when real, like, domain names expire and are re-released and they essentially have bots fighting each other to see who can, who can pounce on them first once they're back on the market. Um, and I- that's essentially what we're seeing. What is in, like, so Dubai's the big market here, the Middle East. Um, Middle East, yeah. <clears throat> what is one that's not a number that is that is big time? Is Lambo, is Ferrari, like somebody, um, like um, Senna or something, something to do with a car, you know, rather than just two numbers or two letters or something like that? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um I wonder a lot of, I mean, the the biggest sales you see are numbers for sure. Yeah, I bet, I bet a lot of the market isn't car guys, Adam. So that, I, don't think, I bet I bet it's just guys who just like, oh yeah, a number <laughs> is elite, like a low number, number one. Well, I, and it's also it's also you know in a, in a country where English isn't the first language, so a lot of them don't care about words that we would understand um, here in these in the states. And so I think that's also the reason why the the market's a little different here as well. Um, in in Texas, their record is is one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars for the plate twelfth man, one two T H man because of uh, I believe Seattle, it's Texas A and M, right? 
Mm. So that was a, a super fan bought that. Um, and then they they sold the number three for like, I want to say about $30,000. And then triple zero one sold for $27,000. So they, they haven't had a six figure sale in Texas at auction um, mm-hmm. in a while or since that uh, 12th man plate. But um, the only, the only way you can resell in Texas is if you bought at auction from the state. So, their pool of resale is a lot smaller than California. California, any plate that's a vanity plate can be re, uh, can be traded between people. What is the, and I know you may not be privy to it, but I'm always curious what the vetting process is because they're not going to let you put swear words on there, mm-hmm. but they will let you right. put things that may sound like, like, I don't know, you know, there's a movie called Meet the Fockers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, would they let Shits you Creek. put Fockers on there, or Shits Creek on there, if that, in fact, was your name? <laughs> and then do they vet it? Like, if I just they, walked in there, my last name's Carolla, I want Mr. Fokker on there. It's like, well, uh-huh. your last name's Carolla. But if I show them my ID and my last name is Fokker, then do I get to do <laughs> Mr. Fokker? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's at the discretion of the DMV, like, there are like the number sixty nine is the biggest one that gets rejected most of the time. Oh. Any variation of that? I like that um, one because if you flip your car, it still that's reads. The same, yeah, mm-hmm. right, exactly, right. And then what's funny is they say it's it's reserved for cars that are you know from the night from nineteen sixty nine year of manufacture nineteen sixty nine. Oh. I was like, okay, I get that. <clears throat> oh, okay. They, they do have a list. They have a list of uh, like three letter combinations that are are banned from the general like uh issuing so like if you get a standard plate it's i believe it's a number of three letters and three numbers right right now in california and so those three letters like the things like fat and sex and raw are all banned from those those issuings and i believe raw? that carries over into into the vanity plates unless you you have a compelling argument like you can you have to write a reasoning for the plate on the application you have to explain what it means, <laughs> and so they they can re, they can reject it for any reason whatsoever. Like I've I tried to get zero fox, z e r o f o x, because it's close to zero fox, right? right. And I was yeah. like, okay, um, it got rejected. Uh, things you know because of like oh, we understand what you think. it depends on who's rejecting it. Like they give you a reason, and it's like it's almost like this person's chuckling at me. Like we know what you're trying to do. It's not going to happen. But you know, <laughs> I'm like, my, all right. Well, I try. I have to try. My so. feeling with something like Zero Fox is just you have on a technicality. Like it may sound mm-hmm. like Zero Fox, just like Meet the Fucker sounds like Meet the Fuckers, but we still get to put it on a billboard. That's yeah, clever. But you probably exactly. shouldn't start your letter with "Dear dumbest people yeah. from their high school." Please <laughs> consider my request. Um, Platebroker.com is where you go. I hope you can check in with us periodically, Michael, because I, I think this is kind of an interesting and kind of burgeoning. Like, you should go to Texas and see what you can lock <laughs> in. Although a little disappointing yeah. to me that it's not Ferrari or Lambo or something like yeah. that, that it's just numbers that are fetching yeah. the highest dollar so far. Well, and so, but in California, I think, I really think because of, you know, there's, there, I think California is going to see popularity in things that are shorter numbers, shorter words, full words without the weird abbreviations that you have to sit there and like, yes, right. You know, that's where the val- that's where the value is going to be. And uh, yeah, I I really think that this is definitely like buying domain names in 1996 because you know who who thought buying fb.com in 1997 was going to yield them eight million dollars when Facebook wanted it. Wow! You know, yeah, you never, you no. never know, and so no. that's kind of where I'm at right now. Somebody bought AdamCarolla dot com in like 1999, and I was like, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, they, they, there's a law in place now for cyber squatting. You can probably get it back if you can find if they're not, if it's not owned by a person named Adam Carolla. I might be able to get it. <laughs> I knew. My buddy Danny Two Sheets Kellison like knew somebody in that world and like made a phone call and got it back later right. on when I needed it. But someone did buy my name domain. And listen, I'm flattered. That's that's just yeah. a feather in my cap. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. For sure. Our, Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. All right, Jonathan Kite is out there. 
got stuff. I'm trying to think if we should maybe just bring them in here. Well, you want to do that, but we're, eh, the break's coming too. All right, why don't we? Why don't we just get Jonathan Kite in here, and we'll uh, ask him a few of these questions. I have a. Uh, hey, Jonathan Kite. Hey. I have. Um, here's a basic uh, sort of thought. I I kind of tell people um, you should learn this. Like my daughter wants to learn the stick shift. I said, fine, I'll teach you how to drive the stick shift. It's good. It's good to know. You know, it's good to, good to know certain things. As I think about it, everybody should learn to paint a room. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to come up. It's going to come up multiple, multiple times in your life. And if it never comes up, it means you're wildly unsuccessful or wildly successful. Exactly. Early. Yeah. But for most people... They buy a home at some point. It's kind of a fixer uppery thing. It's something them and their wife can do on the cheap to add a lot of value. Uh, then they have a kid. They want to paint the library and turn it into the nursery. Yep. You know, it's just it happens a lot. Like you, if if I th- really think about it, the the average American probably has between. Six in 21 painting opportunities in their adult life. Yeah. And I painted like my first apartment. I painted my second apartment. Like there is a way to paint. It's not everyone thinks they can do it. There is a way to do it. I've seen it done wrong plenty of times. It's been done wrong a lot. And it's pretty simple. I was a painter for a while. It's like pretty basic shit, but it takes a minute and once you learn how to paint, then you'll know how to paint. That in in the world of you got to learn to change your tire, you you got to learn to uh, do your taxes or or make a cheese omelet. You know, like in the basic world, no one ever brings up painting. It should be on the list. Go pa- painting I- is whenever you get to an apartment. I feel like that's the first thing that people go. What can we do with these walls? Right. Can we make this our own? Yes. And, and if you know how to do it, because people, I don't think people realize how expensive it is to paint. Mm. And if you oh, to do, hire somebody, yeah, to hire someone, yeah. Oh my god! And you're changing it one shade of eggshell, mm-hmm. but if you feel like you put your stamp on it, yeah. We we, we painted. Yeah, my father was a handyman my, our whole life, so like we had, we painted. Uh, I probably wasted a lot of paint. Mm-hmm. Our, our our paint budget was a little too high. Put us in the mm-hmm. red quite often in the kite residence when my brother and I painted, mm-hmm. but it felt like when we needed to change a room, we could do it. And yeah. there was no issue with it. You said six to 21 times. I, I do because you painted a few times before you left your parents' house. Right. Then you go into your apartments. Sometimes you rent a room in someone's house or with buddies or something. You just paint your room, you know, but then you get your first house. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you're doing it. I'm saying it's an opportunity right. that you may farm out, but it does happen. Now, I've done it hundreds of times. Yeah, but 21 times I was thinking that sounds like tax evasion. Yeah. Like we got to change the house. Color. <laughs> right. This, they're going to remember pink walls. Or that feels like, you know, those, um, those mob bosses that keep getting plastic surgery. Yes. It's like you just keep fixing it up and fixing it up and fixing it up. You ever go to a house, though, by the way, where they haven't stripped the old paint? Yes. And it just looks like an aging, like a plastic surgery gone wrong where there's just like, there's like it's thick, thick, thick yeah. paint on there and it's chipping, but it looks like, um, it looks like striped candy it's underneath. Like a gobstopper. Yeah. Yeah. Just, ugh. Bad prepped. Got to put the time in. Yes. I painted my first job was painting commercial office interiors with Andy, the Jehovah's Witness. And that sucked. It's the thing about painting is the only thing that'll save you from the monotony of painting. Yeah. Is either painting with someone you like, because all you do is talk the whole time because you're just in the same room. This guy's got the brush out and he's cutting it in and you're behind him rolling it out. Yeah, it's quiet. That or a radio. Um, Andy was a Jehovah's Witness who didn't want to talk about anything outside of Jehovah. And we couldn't listen to rock. Oh, so it was just me and him trapped in a room. You guys work for the same company? Yeah. Was it a Jehovah's Witness based painting company? No, 
Just paint scripture on the walls? No, the guy who who owned the company was yeah. anything but a Jehovah's Witness. Well, Andy could work weekends and holidays. <clears throat> yeah, he oh God. just kept leaving pamphlets behind. So <laughs> miserable. Uh, painted him into the wall. Painting with uh, Andy, but it was, yeah, me and Andy. Me and Andy painting. Oh, my. Yeah, you're right, though. It's It's silent except for the... <laughs> And then you just go, oh, there's nothing. You better love the guy next to you. Yeah. Now you just mimed bad form. And the very first thing, if, if, if and then we got made up movies to do. But I will tell everybody, <laughs> everyone, listen to me. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> listen to me. That's where I got my painting lessons was Mr. Miyagi. If you are painting a wall, get a six foot wooden extension, screw it into the roller. And use a five-gallon bucket and hang a screen on it. That's how you paint a wall. You First off, you never bend over. And you never stand next to the wall. You stand back from the wall, about four feet. You take your roller with the extension on it. You dip it into the bucket. You roll it out on the screen, which is hanging on the inside of the five-gallon bucket. Now, the bucket... You can put two gallons in it, and it's still not halfway full. You can also grab the handle, throw the roller and the extension in it, and walk around. You can't do that with the fucking pan. The pan slops everywhere, doesn't hold enough, and when you roll it in the pan, it pushes it out the the uh, shallow end of the and you pan. you have to keep refilling that pan. Five-gallon bucket. When you're done for the day, put like a half a cup of water in it and some saran wrap over the top of it. Leave it. Next day, come in, stir it up okay. a little bit, go go out again, leave the fucking roller, leave it all in. You to, don't have to take it out. You don't have to wash it. You don't have to do anything. To, to be fair, though, your way, your karate is not as good. Yeah. No, I, yeah. no I, my kata. Yeah, you your kata. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You're doing a lot of Tai Chi there, buddy. Uh, We're not going to be Johnny in the all Valley tournament with that way. <laughs> Stand back about four or five feet from the wall, dunk it in, roll it out, and then just let the extension do the work. You don't bend over. Or, or raise up, you just roll yeah. roll it out from a distance. Let me give a tip too, because I I see this a lot more. Take the time to tape. Take the time. Oh my to god! Tape. Do you ever see when they don't tape and they're just like, ah, no one will notice. It's the only thing we know. Yes. No matter how good the rest of it is, you're just like, what a bum. Take the time to tape and take even less time to remove one slot head screw <laughs> and take the motherfucking plates off the switch oh, yeah. and off the sockets. Take them off. Do not tape them off. Do not paint around them. I right. say paint over the sockets. <laughs> Bro, how many, you know how many apartments I've oh, lived in where I walked in? That's a marker. And they're just oh like, my God. Yeah, yeah, that's always the worst. Can't plug anything in. No. It's sealed. <laughs> no. All right. We got some made up movie titles. Jonathan Kite's going to hang in, maybe pop out a celebrity impersonation or two. And we'll take a quick break. Back with made up movie right after this. Fast growing trees. Well, you want some shade, you want some fresh fruit, you want to breathe some life into that old stale backyard of yours. Well, this spring, why don't we go with fastgrowingtrees.com? They made it simple. They're experts, curate thousands of plants so you can find the perfect fit for your unique climate. Their plant experts are always available to help keep your plants healthy right on through the season. No long lines, no hauling around heavy plants. Sometimes they fall over and spill that mulch in the back of your car, the back of your SUV. You order online and your plants are shipped right to your door. I use these guys. They add so much trees. It's, it seems so simple, but so much to your yard. And get a, get a lemon tree if you live in the right place. You'll never be out of lemons. Uh, plus, they got a 30-day alive and thrive guarantee, so you know everything's going to look fresh right out of the box. It is fast-growing trees. Am I right, Dawson? Join over 1.5 million happy fast-growing trees customers. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Adam now to get 15% off your entire order. Get 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash Adam. Morgan and Morgan. Let me lay a stat on you. People 15 to 24 have the highest rate of ER visits due to car accidents. And uh, I got kids and they're about that age. So it seems, well, they're right in that age group. It's kind of scary. So if you've ever been injured, check out Morgan and Morgan. Submitting a claim with Morgan and Morgan is easy. Uh, it's, you can use it 
Same way you use like a rideshare app. It is that easy. And even easier than swiping right on a dating app, which, by the way, leads to more trouble where this could lead to more money. America's largest injury law firm, 100 plus offices nationwide, over 800 lawyers, more than 15 billion recovered for clients. So if you're injured in an accident, Check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win, so it's no risk. Morgan & Morgan, right, Dawson? For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529. From your cell phone, that's F-O-R, thepeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Tommy John, most dads taste, well, they get better with age. Scotch, steaks, naps. We all get smarter with age, but still rocking the old tidy whities Well, then you're long overdue for an upgrade. Give dad the gift with new Tommy John's. That's right. The best gift you can give dad. I'm wearing mine right now. You will never go back to what you're wearing once you get into the new Tommy John's or any Tommy John's. So they're a lot more comfortable than uh, the old tidy whities And when you're more comfortable, you do everything better. Four times the stretch of competing brands, over 2 million pairs sold. Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. And you can grab a pair for yourself, too. So as long as you're buying for dad, get some for you, too. All backed by the best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free. Guarantee. Right, Dawson? Get your Father's Day gifts early at Tommy John's Memorial Day sale, now through May 30th. Save 30% site-wide at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. 30% off at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. We have it so good in America, we're just canceling words right now. Not even, not the racial slur. That shit got to be gone forever ago. I'm talking about everyday words. Like on a plane, you... The flight attendant can't use the word turbulence anymore. I have no idea. They say the word rough air. Nobody ever died from rough air. Rough air is when you're in an elevator that's packed and then you go to leave and right before you leave you go and then just closes. You're like, God damn it, Gary, that rough air, motherfucker. They can say rough air and they can say light bumps. Light bumps! That sounds like a negative review for a Coke dealer. Yo, I love Andrew, but he got some light bumps, bro. Two stars. Jonathan Kite is on the Adam Carolla Show. Jonathan is going to hang in. We'll do some uh, made-up movie with him. Speaking of movies, um, so Jonathan is, is good friends with Jamie Foxx. Mm. And yeah, I know you've worked with them, and I know, gosh, the all, all the crazy health updates we've we've heard from in the last month has been has been wild. Do you know anything? Is there anything? No, I mean, I know. I saw what his daughter put out. Yeah, she said like he's playing pickleball. He's good. That's what's so funny though about. But he was in a facility when she said that. Is that what it said? Yeah, she said he's playing pickleball, uh, and then. Several days later, only because I watched TMZ, mm. he was in to. a like facility in Georgia for people who have had strokes and brain injuries and stuff. So he was, she was saying he's out doing this thing. You thought he was back in California hanging out in Malibu playing pickleball. Oh, he was right in. He was in a facility. He was in a facility when she said that. Yeah, well, I guess you could be outside in a facility and go. Yeah, he's out. Those facilities have pickleball now. <laughs> yeah, I everywhere. I, so we've been now. taking the nation by yeah, storm. Really, we really gotta popular. we gotta look into it because then they said this was a facility that had like simulations of stuff. So he could have been playing video simulated pickleball in a facility. We pickleball. We pickleball. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And his. His daughter just said he's playing pickleball, but there's a there's a story. A black <laughs> Entertainment black News. news. That's the right. Black information. <laughs> this is BIN on iHeartRadio. Oh, yeah, that was a report. I just I just filed a report. So I don't know, Ben. Look into that. But there there's something there that's not yeah, right. I saw, I saw her post it. Yeah, I I mean, and I I thought it was everything was good, but I I didn't even think about that. I mean, I my, my well, you shouldn't have because it was meant to deceive. I was deceived, but it was only from watching TMZ where I kind of learned he was in a facility and not playing pickleball. 
I think it's funny, like we're just in news in general that we need to feed the machine. And so mm-hmm. I think people are just pumping out like because you're looking at all these other things that are like, he needs your thoughts and prayers now more than ever. Mm-hmm. So then it's like you look at that and you want to like that post. So then that gets pushed into the algorithm to be like, oh, this is the thing that it is. When the truth is they're just trying to get content. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the most uh you know, not even exciting, but just sort of like, oh, just stop and read this. Even though I, I remember reading one of the posts and following a link and being like, there was no validity to it whatsoever. It was just like, they were just like, we, he needs your thoughts and prayers. And you're just like, why? And then there was no link for yeah. it. So, yeah. well, we'll look into it, but there was more to it than him just playing pickleball. And it's so specific that you go, oh, he's playing pickleball and pickleball feels very Californian. So you figure he's back home. Well, he has a pickleball paddle company. Oh, he does? Yeah, no, do he? So the reason she said that is he's incredibly involved. I, to me, I think he's one of the faces of pickleball. He has the best paddle. That's the name of his paddle company. And he, yeah, he's like a huge um, like mouthpiece and, 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 you know, the face of it. Uh, as of yesterday, TMZ says he's in a facility in Chicago getting treatment. So the, the pickleball thing from mm. three weeks ago is a little, probably a little dubious, but, uh, okay. We have an intro to made up movie. Maybe he's in a tournament there. <laughs> Come to life. What? In a world where titles are many and plots are few, one man can take your movie names and make them come to life. What is going on? Adam Carolla stars in Made Up Movie. All right, let's see. Let's talk to uh, line three. Uh, Before we get to these movies, I want to say that we will give away a redemption code to your live pay-per-view. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's Solana Beach. Yeah, that's coming up in uh, June 4th. So if anybody wants, and if anybody wants to sign up, just go to livewin.com slash Corolla Live to watch it. And it's also archives, archives, so you don't have to watch it live. If you just want to watch the show, you can still. Oh, you're doing it with Brad Williams. Yeah. yeah. I love Brad Williams. Oh, he's, he's great. Nice. He's the, so, yeah. Uh, we don't have a him. name for line three, so I don't know who the caller is. Caller, line three. Did they give you a name up in there? It's me, Vin uh, Diesel. Can you- <laughs> yeah. Am I talking? Yeah, you are. Yeah, they, just, they didn't add your name Christina. to the list. Thank you. Christina. Thank with you. With a C. Yeah. <laughs> um, the title, uh, by the way, Adam, I'm going to be at your NYC show on uh, Saturday night. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, good. Yeah, it'll be a good um, show. I'm excited. Uh, the My made-up movie is kind of my life's credo. Mm-hmm. Silence is golden. Silence is golden. And by that, uh, it'll be at Sony Hall Friday and Saturday doing uh, stand up there. Have some friends perform too. So uh, say hi after the show, Christina. All well, right. I do. I've got a, wanna, want you to sign your latest book. I have a copy of it I'll bring. Thank you. Uh, gladly. All right. Uh, let's see. Here's what's popping in mind um, The Four Seasons had a hit called Silence is Golden. Silence is... Anyone know that song? Just me. Just you. Just me. But Dawson will find Silence is Golden. I probably know it, but I didn't know that was the name of the song. I don't even know if you know it. Uh, it's a it's a deepish <laughs> Four Seasons Four cut. Four Seasons B-side. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, how about this? How about Silence is Golden is the name of the fifth Four Season who was the neighborhood guy who was part of the group yeah. who was going to fame, but tragedy struck. And now we follow his story as the guy who was the neighborhood guy, knew Frankie Valley and all the rest of the four seasons, all growing up in Brooklyn. Helped the formation. Helped of the, the formation. Group. They used his garage to practice yeah. in. His mom would drive him around to functions and... Oh, here it is. He I was, like the idea of the fifth. I think he was the base. Maybe it's Adam Driver. Um, um, I um, uh, you guys are obviously. Uh, hey, it's me again. Um, I know I'm leaving a message for the what feels like the fiftieth time today, but no one is <laughs> calling me back. It's still me, Brad Adam, Bradley. Yeah, so silence is golden. Is the fifth 
four season. The fifth season. The <laughs> fifth season who was around, but at some point they had to explain to him. And it was probably his idea to call themselves the four seasons. He was the guy that talked on the songs, like how Boys to Men had that guy who right, was like, right. yo, Turn baby. Come on, I didn't. I know you right. cheated on me. So that was him on those songs. They're like, we got to get rid of this talking guy. And right. then at some point, Frankie Valley was like, but there are only four seasons, and you're the fifth. Yeah. Well, technically, the there's cut him. Technically, there's there's hurricane season. Bro, there's that's monsoon true. season. There, 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 there's uh, watermelon season. Uh, there's watermelon. There's strawberry season. There's a there's there's so they are uh, unlimited they cut seasons him. Here. And we follow him. You know, he's working at his dad's like hardware hardware's. store yeah. in Brooklyn. You know, meanwhile, he's turning the radio on and he's, hearing the oh. Four Seasons. And he's having to shut it off, you know, the whole time. Watching four the, Seasons, uh, we got a marathon in a row. We're not playing right. anything else for the next 24 hours on every station in New York. That's Golden Oldies, beep, 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 Four Seasons style. Right. There was never a fifth. He tries to start his own band. It doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, Called he, Seasons of Loneliness. He's like, he's showing up drunk to the venues. You know, they play yeah. Madison Square Garden. Oh, he's he's trying shows. to get backstage. I'm Don't in the you band. know who I am? I'm the fifth season, you know? Yeah. It's a story of the man who was the fifth season of the four seasons. I see Liam si Neeson. He wrote Silence is Golden when he right. was in the 11th grade. But their they manager. They took it from him. Their manager, Liam Neeson, he's, oh. he convinced them. Like, we gotta, uh, get, evil, rid we gotta Liam, get rid of him. Listen, folks, everyone sit down. We're not gonna wait for Bradley. He's out there working at his father's hardware store, which is good, because I think that that's where the future is. Mm -hmm. Now, just before anyone talks, I just wanna talk to the group, and I'm coming from a place of love. And he mm -hmm. holds the cross around his neck. Mm -hmm. I had a vision last night. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself spoke to me in a dream. Mm -hmm. You all are going to be very famous. But as I've looked at a calendar many times, and I don't think I have to remind you, there are only four seasons. The mm. fifth one's getting very confusing. <laughs> he does a lot of talking. Mm. The songs are two and a half minutes long. We mm. don't need an extra 30 seconds of mm. talking. Mm. Mull it over. <laughs> but Jesus Christ wants you to move on. Yeah, very mm. Christian. Mm. And then what he has to do is he has to convince the fifth season that he's a solo act that he needs to break off on oh. his own. These guys are dead weight. He's the talent of the four seasons. He should break off and start his own label and go solo. Bradley, do you have a second? Sit down. Do you know where I just was just now? I was with the band. Mm. They wanted to get together and they told me there are only four seasons. They're jealous of you. They think that you're not part of this but I see you as the real talent. Grabs his cross again. Mm. I had a dream last night. Ah. Jesus Christ spoke to me in a dream about you. He said there is only one season, the season of Bradley. Mm. We're going to put you on the road. You're going to open for the Chantels. Yeah. The it, Shintels. It's a, good, it's a good name, too, because silence is golden. People don't know. It's a deep cut. It's also what they're trying to do to him. A deep mm -hmm. cut. They're tr no, oh, well, and that, it's, it's all, and oh, they're trying oh. to silence him. The deepest cut. Silence is golden. The tagline is the, the deepest the cut. The deepest oh, yeah. cut is you. Mm. Ooh. That's a tagline. Mm. And if the hero cashes in at the end, silence is golden because he made a bank load of money. Gold on record. Yeah. Gold. Mm. That was my song. Mm -hmm. Just cuts him in a bus stop talking to a squirrel. All right. <laughs> the story of the fifth season. Silence is golden. All right. I love it. I hear the Oscar buzz. <laughs> yeah, you can hear him buzzing. Obviously, two of the four seasons are going to have to be black because if we're going <laughs> to we're looking for Oscar consideration or we want to get in at Tribeca, we need a diverse cast, so we'll have to figure that one out. Of course. But uh, <laughs> other than that, it's going to be it's it's going to be a, a, a story that has ne never been told. No, people don't know about the fifth season. And Jersey Boys did so well. Right. This feels like. I, and by the this way, great story. The, this is the. This is what you don't know. What they didn't show the behind you. the music. Yes, yes, of Jersey Boys. Yeah. Silence. And then Liam Neeson. You just see him with a cigarette, just going, and then looking at the end. You don't know who he's leaving behind, and he goes, "Silence is golden," and then just goes, <laughs> "Yeah." Good title. coming, I you know, trailer, Christmas. Everything. You know, it says Christmas release. It's a Christmas good. release. Oh, yeah. This is a big time movie. Yeah. We got big time stars. <laughs> oh, my God. Christina, you good? I love it. 
I love it. It's fabulous. Thank you. All right. I'll see you uh, Saturday night. Stay on the line, Christina. Saturday. We'll see if we like this better than the Take other care. movie. Yeah. Don't hang up. All right. Let's see. Let's talk to uh, Carmelo. Carmelo, 33, San Antonio. That's right. Cool. Yep. Uh, hey, guy. Hi, guy. Hey, yeah, hi, guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, y'all ready for my movie pitch? Yeah. Story of a man. Mm. Any thoughts? Story of a man. Jesus? Jesus? Not bad. Yeah, it's a second coming of Jesus. Mm-hmm. A third coming. Mm-hmm. There we go. That's right. That's a Vi- no. that's a Viagra commercial, right? The third coming of Jesus. <laughs> mm-hmm. He rose once and he'll rise again <laughs> right. all night long. Story of man. So we do a serious sort of retrospective of of Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Story modern day is the title called the story of a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The title story, story of, of a man. man. We have we have a woman. She hasn't had sex and she's she becomes pregnant. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we doing it. Is it a comedy? Do we go comedic like elements like a, for sure? Little, Seth Rogen, maybe a little Sorkin. Seth Rogen as dialogue. Jesus Christ. Yes. Wow. What would that <laughs> That's sound? great. Like comedy, and then yeah. every time uh, somebody has a good idea, foreshadowing, he goes, eh, 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 "Nailed it!" And he turns right, all, nailed, he turns all of his drinks into wine. He's just constantly drunk. Right. Or mean, he turns all water into cannabis. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with <he's>, THC. <laughs> uh, he's like, I could use some more bread. So it's a uh, it's kind of a modern day take. Now, is it a little like uh, Bruce Almighty, where it's like it's he's this modern day guy that was Bruce Almighty? Was he Jesus? He or was something? God. He was he was God. It's no, that no, kind of thing. Bruce Almighty, the God was yeah, he was played by Morgan Freeman, and then he got the powers of God. Right. And right. then Evan Almighty, he got the powers of Noah. Ah, oh, sick. Okay, so we do some version of that. I think Seth so. It's Rogan. a modern guy. Mm-hmm. Who's like, wait a minute. And he's like trying to convince his girlfriend, wait a minute. I don't listen, listen. I think I am Jesus. Right. I think like there's like a second book. I think I'm the third book. Right. Bill, right. you were adopted. You don't even know your parents. I know. That's the thing. Have you even read the Bible? I feel like that's uh, pretty clear. And then you, so it starts off with a girlfriend who claims you got her pregnant. But you never had sex with her. Yeah. But she's pregnant and she's like, I didn't have sex with anybody except for that night where I got really drunk and I can't remember, but I woke up next to you in bed and you're like, we never had sex. And then there's a DNA paternity thing and it is your kid, although you never had sex with her. And that's what starts to dawn on you. Immaculate conception. So he's not Jesus. So he's Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm an atheist from the <laughs> valley. Right. I forgot about well, the whole thing. That, no, he, he, I literally just finished reading the Bible this morning, yeah. you know, so <laughs> yeah, I'm you're work, boned I am ready for this test, sir. Mm-hmm. No, Adam was doing a flashback. So Joseph, actually played by Jeff Bridges, mm-hmm. realizes that. Wait a minute, man. Wait, you hold on one second, son. I'm telling you, we I did not come. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I was uh, I had so much peyote. I was on a lot of it. I was talking yeah. to a turtle the whole night in the corner, man. I didn't come in this woman. But then that's Seth, the trailer. Yeah. yeah. So Seth Rogen then grows up, finds out he has he has some sort of tendencies, some powers, and mm-hmm. he's trying to convince everyone. Like, I think I'm Jesus. We went right. to a water park the other day. Mm. And I didn't even realize I was at the deep end. You know why? I was walking on water. Yeah. Wow. And Pope yeah. Paul Giamatti is so upset <laughs> by the, by these accusations. He's like Herod. His claims. Yeah, he can't stand it. Well, who's this king of the Jew? <laughs> who's this king of the Jew? I'm the king of the Jew. He's like the local mayor. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes by, or he's a car salesman, but he goes by like King of the Jew Cadillac. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm the real King of the Jew. That's his commercial. Yeah. And yeah. he goes, I'm the modern guy. And he goes, I, I, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm the King of the Jews. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> all right. Let's talk to uh, all Carmelo. Right, thanks, Carmelo. Carmelo. Uh, I got to be honest. I was actually thinking. More of like a uh, maybe a Billy Jack or a uh, 
Jason Statham or a Walking Tall, like an action movie, a very corny but mm. real wholesome. You well, know? The oh, there's that gonna be idea. action. Kind of with that. Yeah. There's oh, there's action. gonna be action in this one. Yeah, Jesus well, just fighting off the Romans. It's just guys named Roman. Walking Tall was remade with The Rock. Yeah, right? it was a, an early right. kind of rock. Uh, That's offering. a Walking Tall I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the real one is. Um, what was his weapon of choice? It's like a four by four. Yeah, it no. was a two by. I mean, it was a two, two was by a, four. I think it was just a two by four, and uh, it was a four by four. I think it was a two. The by rocks four. was a four by four. Oh, the rocks! <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. But no, the no, rid- no. the rock used the four by four. That's what he used it because that's how badass he was. And yeah. Adam, you'd appreciate that. Who holds a four by four and just you know clubs the pretty looking casino owner with it? You know, and beats all the you know. You, you get it. Yeah, well, it's three and a half by three and a half, but yeah, it's still called a four uh, by four. And the original was Joe Don Baker, and he played Buford Pusser. Now, because because Jackie Gleason was Buford T. Justice, right? But I think the original Joe Don Baker, Walking Tall, which they said is based on a true story, was. Buford, Buford Pusser. Pusser. Wow. That's a name. That's a great I think that's the name of the actual sheriff who the story was written about, the true story, yep. was Buford Pusser. Buford Pusser sounds like a character in a Pixar movie that deals with inside the, uh, like the right. human body. Right. Was it Buford <laughs> Pusser? I'm affected. I'm Buford Pusser, and I'm going <laughs> to get all these white blood sales. <laughs> Is it Buford Pusser? Wow. Yeah. Buford yep. Pusser. That's his 1964, name. 1964, 1970. was a sheriff in McNary, McNary County in Tennessee. Mm hmm. 1970 to 72. Pusser is known for his virtual one man war on moonshining, prostitution, gambling, and other vices along the Mississippi Tennessee state line. True story. Portrayed by Joe Don Baker. That guy's won some fights. Oh, yeah. He was also a wrestler known as Buford the Bull in the Mid-South. All right, let's see. Last one. Let's do one more, and then we're heading back out to the picket lines, because we shouldn't be giving these away. Yeah, you're right. We're giving these things away, and this is is gold. Wait, we're recording? We're spinning. (laughs) Eric, 47, Richmond, Virginia. How are you, Chris? Congratulations. My daughter was born the exact same day as your son. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Eric. Congratulations, Congratulations. to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, my movie is Snap Judgment. All right, I got a take. The take is it's kind of a remember the Chicago uh, Cubs Bartman sort of interference thing? Yeah. Life destroyed. It's, it's going to hiding. It's a it's a baseball umpire who you know he worked his way through high school, little league, high school, college. A lot you know, of pride in his job. Finally got called up to the show, and at some point, he's he's umping a game, which is like you know one of these snake bitten franchises, like like the Cubs or like one of these teams that hadn't won in like a oh, hundred and nine years or something home game playing the Yankees, you know what I mean? Uh, makes the wrong call Full at first count. base, oh. you know, or you know, home home play, whatever. The strikes all the he muffs the call on first base, you know, game over, blah, blah, blah. Everyone turns oh. on him. He essentially has to go like Bill Russell. Was it Bill Russell? Yeah. Has to go to like exile. Was it Bill Russell, the second baseman for the uh, Boston? Yeah, I think it was Bill Russell. But you I think of the fo- you know wait, wait, who's the basketball player? Bill Russell's Bill? a basketball player. Yeah, wait, Bill Russell's uh, number six. Billy. Uh, wait a minute, Billy. Uh, who the hell's the? Who is the Boston Red Sox first baseman? The ball got under. Oh come on, you fuckers! Nobody knows his name. I, Bill. Oh, Bill. Uh, Bill Pusser? <laughs> Bill T. Pusser. But everyone is listening yeah, is yelling about it right now. There's nobody in this building that knows I, this one. Bill know, Buckner. I mean, Bill, Bill Buckner. Buckner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's it. All right. By the way, right. I love what you're saying. I'm going to add one more element to it. Remember that 
Gwyneth Paltrow movie Sliding Doors that if she had gone one way yeah. it would have been one thing and it, mm-hmm. I think if it was called Snap Judgment you would see the parallel stories of him calling the guy safe or him calling him out right and ah. how it, these are like two different sort of like run Lola run right with one decision it changes everything in your life and in that moment right Snap Judgment right and the guy lives in the town of where the team resides from and his house is destroyed yeah. you know his life is ruined but he finds love. Sure. That's the thing. He he is exiled. He has to move to Alaska to get away from it all. But he meets a woman, a beautiful woman there, who also fled to Alaska after she was a high school teacher. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Where was she a high school teacher? She was a high school teacher in Michigan. Okay. And her and her husband went to the high school, met at the high school, and then taught at the high school later. Uh, it turned out that her her love, you know, he, he was on the football team. She was a cheerleader back in the day. Then they, it was a love story. Then they went to college. They got their degrees. They got married. They ended up back at the same. He got a 16-year-old pregnant and, and and at the same school that they yes, met at and, and worked at. He's a shop teacher. Yes. Gave and, her some wood. Yes, yeah, right. And the whole town became the talk of the town. She moved. She moved to rebuild her life yeah. as well because her life had been destroyed living in this town with her husband. You know, that she then finds, you know, she's working, tending bar at some way out of, out of Anchorage, you know, honky talk, trying yeah. to start, not one to talk about her past. You know, they both neither come in. Deal. The no. meeting is neither one of them wants to talk about their past, right? He's had to leave Chicago. She's had to leave Michigan. They both ended up there. And, and love is found between these two damaged souls who really weren't guilty. You know, they didn't do anything wrong, but both their communities drove them out. Yeah. I love it. I think the name of the bar is Blubbers. Yeah. It's a fisherman's mm-hmm. bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some comedy there. Absolutely. Yeah. The locals, like a la Moe's Tavern or Cheers. Right, right. There's the locals there. Yeah. yeah I see like a Robert Downey Jr. kind of. Mm. Do you think he's the lead? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I've been waiting for... Uh, uh, about five minutes. Could I please get my um, my uh, Jack and Coke? Big green. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah, just little... uh, yeah. Doesn't want to talk about it. He right. Got, he's he's People overly off-putting. performing. Yeah, because he doesn't want to say anything personal and deflecting. He's scared. So then there's a there's a point there's a point where, and this is the real cathartic kind of breakdown point. You know, they're starting to have a relationship. She's um, they're they're dating. Now, but they they still don't know each other's past, right? You know what I mean. And then here's the real moment, sort of toward the beginning of Act Three. She comes out of the the bedroom, and they're going out tonight to celebrate, you know. And she holds up two dresses. She's got like a red dress and a blue dress, and she goes, "Which one would you pick? Which one do you want to see me in tonight?" And you go, "I I don't know. That's your decision, Uh, you know." Yeah, and she says, "Which one do you like the most?" You know, I don't. I just. I can't make a decision. I don't know what that'll mean. I don't know what the implications afraid, will mean. He's afraid to and, choose and, anything. And, and she's like, I don't get it. I'm just at it. And you're like, you don't get it. You don't get me. And you storm yeah, it out. That's the problem. You don't get me. It's you're raining. Get me. It's this raining out. It's raining yeah. outside. No you know, into the night you go and you break down, you know, and she doesn't know what I do. I just wanted you to pick a dress, make a decision. Yeah, sorry, it's just not going to work out. We start having the flashbacks of the crowds. Oh, yeah, he's definitely they're, they're having booing. those. Yeah, PTSD. You know, you go, give me the, the red dress, boom, beers oh. being dumped on you. They're the everything. two colors of the teams that we're playing. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Cardinals and the Cubs. Yeah. The red and the blue. And you're like, red, I white, don't. blue, and red, and, and you're, gray. And you're breaking down going, why does everyone want something from me? I don't know. Just pick your own dress. You start weeping. It's a it's Oscar oh, yeah. clip worthy. Yeah. I, I thought I'd... Uh, I'd escape this, but I uh, guess I never will. Mm. Yeah, she doesn't understand what she did wrong. It's not you, it's mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the deal I gotta go. Mm. It's been nice knowing you, but uh, you're safe and I'm out. Mm. Go, oh, there you go. Come on, we're done. Yeah. Eric, yeah, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I have to say though, uh, we were um, 
this was actually kind of a, a reverse engineering. We were, uh, me and my buddies were talking about the Super Bowl, and we were talking about your plot to have a long snapper mess up the snap to yeah. blow the game. Mm. And, and we were thinking about it. We were thinking oh, like a snap movie. Yeah, like we, still, we still gave him a sports movie. Say, yeah. Yeah. I uh, listen. Look, I know everyone has an idea in their head when they call in, but and they're always going to be disappointed. <laughs> but, but we're the ideas guys. Yeah. That's us. We're the crazy. That's what we're here. Yeah, yes. the, room. the think tank. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, I've said this. I. I, I mean it. Like <clears throat> I wanted to make a movie. Now Eric has reminded me, but <clears throat> the lowest paid guy. On an NFL roster is the long snapper. Yep. Now, I'm not saying they're not exceptions, and I'm not saying the lowest paid guy, but oftentimes the holder, he's the backup quarterback sometimes, or the punter, or something like that. There are not a lot of guys that get paid less than the long snapper. Right. All you need to do, in my movie, you kidnap his daughter, the mafia does, to get to him. Taken style. A week before the Super Bowl. Whoa. Right. But all you'd really need to do is get to this dude and go, how's two million bucks sound to you? Yeah, up his his money. I'll take two million bucks cash. And I'm not telling you snap it 80 feet over the... I'm saying one field goal, bounce it. Just bounce it back. Come up, th- or hit hit the holder on the outside shoulder, or whatever. Just just one, one bad snap on a field goal, one punt where you just sail it, mm-hmm. and we'll shave eight points off of this game right now. So all it's going to take. All you have, by the way, no one can ever prove it, and no one can ever accuse you of anything. And they won't replace you because there's not another long snapper on the team. Just. Drill one over the punter's head so the ball skips back into the end zone or get a safety or they recover it on the four yard line or, or whatever it is. Just one bad. Oh, they'll be talking about you. They'll say you had a bad game, yeah. but they won't blame you. And not the Super Bowl. Yeah, at the Super oh, Bowl. Oh, at the Super Bowl. So oh, he's yeah. probably not coming back next year. No, this is preseason. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Doing something <laughs> real nice. The stakes are high. Yeah, when they're, when they're, when they're 0 and 10. Let's get hold of that guy and just give him. Look, if you're gambling, like if you if this is info, like if it's a pick 'em type game, and you know you got one field goal that's going to be shit, and one bad punt, one bad snap on that punt, just over the head of the punter, that's got to be good for six, seven, eight points. Yeah, right there. It could happen to anybody, and too. it could happen to anyone. It's unprovable. And that's that's what the tagline is. It could happen to anyone. I think that was a movie. It could happen to anyone. I think there is a movie called. I think. Honestly, fuck them. It's ours. <laughs> yeah, it's my attitude, Adam. You know, it could happen to anyone. I. And who would be the kicker? Look that up. Or who would be the the punter? Sorry, the the uh, the guy who holds. Well, we don't. That'd be his best friend, right? Oh, like oh. A, so you like mean the? Buddy. I thought you were asking who the long snapper would but be. But there wouldn't. You, he'd have a, a confidant on the team. No, no. He couldn't tell anybody. He's a loner. Well, it's his best friend. That's what I mean. That he can't. Oh, he's got it inside. Yeah, the holder. That's what it is. Oh no. And then you know what you play? Mm, well, the no, the this? holder you has gotta, the holder has a daughter with leukemia. But then the and the song NFL is? insurance has cut him out. Oh, because he didn't. And he's going to make the money, but he can't tell it. You know what I mean? And then they play the gambler. You got to know when to hold. Mm-hmm. If we can clear it. Yeah. We'll do yeah, a feel a lot. Obviously, I'll yeah. sing it. Mm-hmm. I'll do a Kenny Rogers impression. Uh, it could happen. Wait, what was the name of that? It Happened One Night is the name of a movie. Yes. And I think it is, could happen to you as a movie. It could happen to you as one. But what is this one? Yeah. Well, that's the Nicolas Cage one where he splits the, um, the right. lottery ticket. But what was your idea? Title. Uh, it could happen to anyone. It could happen to anyone. Oh, yeah. maybe yeah. it could happen to you. Is what I was. Is what I was thinking. It could happen to anyone. Yeah, I don't. Know. I don't know. Darnell Pusser is. <laughs> it can happen to. Oh shit! Oh, that's that's already tagline. no. It's unhinged, but that's, that's a, their tagline. Uh, he can happen to anyone. He can <laughs> happen to anyone. I'm still surprised no one's got. No one tried to grease the palm of a long snapper. Maybe they have, though. I know. That's what when I'm we, saying. We don't know. We we've all been deceived. I have that. watched every single Super Bowl, and I've literally never seen a bogus snap in every Super Bowl. I've 
I've seen punters drop one that sort mm-hmm. of got drilled into their chest and field goals missed and stuff like that. But uh, never been a really bad snap. You've yeah. seen him in the playoffs, but not in the Super Bowl. But it's totally expected, kind of, to uh, for it to happen in the Super Bowl oh, just because of the no. pressure. You're going to pick yes. it. Yes. Three, 313, but that's their tagline. Right. I, I think the name of our movie is It Can Happen to Anyone. Hmm. Although snap judgment wouldn't be bad. Snap right? judgment's pretty good. All right, let's well, take let's, a break well, before we before oh. we take a break. Oh, let's, that's right. Let's bring it to the uh, the academy and the booth. Who wins the free pass to the pay per view on June fourth? We're giving it to Christina. I'll give it to Christina. Golden. Silence is golden. Wins. I should get a goddamn free pass for <laughs> Silence is Golden, which drew a blank for everybody in our peanut gallery. I had, I had a Monk movie in mind. But I pulled off a deep cut. All right, we'll take a break. We'll do some news. Sure. And we'll do it right after this. The Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, The Jordan Harbinger Show. Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts and interesting people, you should definitely check this one out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter anymore. Man, is he right? Or you go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy. We've had him on uh, many times. I know the man well, and he's worth a listen. We enjoy the show, and we know you will too. So you can search The Jordan Harbinger Show. That is H A R B as in boy, I N as in Nancy, G E R, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are in the business of keeping your car on the road. They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts knowledge you need for your maintenance and repairs. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of the car. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. If your check engine light is on, O'Reilly Auto Parts will scan it and retrieve your trouble codes for free. If needed, they'll even refer you to a repair shop. When you're a do-it-yourselfer, and need a specialty tool to finish the job, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and ask about their loaner tool program. Simply pay a refundable deposit and borrow the right tool. Then get your deposit back when it's returned. Ready for some new wiper blades? A professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you pick out just what you need for your car and will even install them for you for free. O'Reilly Auto Parts has thousands of quality parts and accessories in stock that you might need to keep your vehicle running at its best. Place your order online at O'Reilly Auto Parts and then pick it up at your local store. You can even have your order shipped directly to your doorstep, giving you the freedom of shopping on your schedule. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Taro, T-U-R-O dot com. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, BD here from Brentwood. I'm driving down San Vicente Boulevard the other day, heading west, and I noticed a gardener who has the leaf blower, of course. He's blowing all the leaves to the neighbor's property. No rakes or trash cans involved. Just blowing all this shit from one property to the guy's house next door. Ten minutes later, no joke, I'm on my way back home, driving east now, and I notice another gardening crew at more or less the same spot blowing the same leaves right back to the original property. In the end, as far as I can tell, nothing was achieved other than the obvious insane noise pollution and loads of toxins blowing up into the air. 
F leaf blowers and F those two crews. Try an effing rake. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Well, all right. No. I made my thoughts clear on leaf blowers, and it'll come to fruition, but they pollute more than any other form of internal combustion engine, and we don't care. Jonathan Kite is here. Kite Club, name of the podcast, where we find finer podcasts, and also doing shows coming up. Friday and Saturday, Sunset Strip Comedy Club in Texas, Austin, Texas, and then Austin, Texas, the ballroom at Spider House. That'll be Saturday. Tempe, Arizona at the Improv Comedy Theater, and that'll be June 29th through July 2nd. Jonathan Kite Comedy is where you go, dot com, I should say. All right, what do we got? So, well, before we get into news, your pitch for Snap Judgment, the original where the umpire blew the call at first base, that, that reminded me, do you remember in 2010 when that happened to a pitcher named Armando Galarraga? He was throwing a perfect game. I do remember and this. And the third out of the ninth inning, he called the batter safe, and then upon review, he was out. So mm-hmm. he basically took away the perfect game from Galarraga, which I mean, mm-hmm. this is like the most rare thing you can do yeah. mm-hmm. in almost all, all, all sports. Yeah. And and. He he regrets so much. I remember the next day he was. But did it get overturned? No, you can't. No, you no. can't. Oh, because they can do it in basketball and they can do it in football, but they're not allowed to Especially, do it in well, baseball. Well, and all the overturned calls have, are a lot more recent than 2010. I and think. they're sitting there with video monitors. Like I've been watching the NBA in the last two minutes. I think they can review a call or something. There's a lot of new rules for that, and they can keep looking for all these different angles. Yeah. Whereas like baseball, I feel like I never see them. I think ump air is also just part of baseball too. It's just but now they review plays. Don't you can they? you can challenge and review okay. and stuff. But anyway, but anyway so yeah. he ruined this guy's ruined, perfect ruined game. Ruined the guy's perfect Oof, game. But then yeah. the next day they had a game, they had the game obviously in the same field because uh, it was part of a series. They uh, Jim Joyce was the umpire. He came out crying. Because mm-hmm. he regret, he felt so bad. Wait, what's Tom Hanks say about crying in baseball? <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball. Well, deserve the tears, Tom. Oh, he come on! Took away the perfect game, and uh, Armando went up there, shook his hand, they embraced, and mm. uh, forgave him right there in front of everybody. Jimmy nice. Dugan wouldn't have done that. That's yeah. right. Well, speaking of uh, baseball and forgiveness, uh, so Oakland Athletics just fired. Their play-by-play broadcaster Glenn Kuiper on Monday, um, or, or actually, yeah, because uh, did you see this clip of what happened? No, I so didn't see it. This happened in Kansas City. Their uh, the A's were playing in Kansas City. Yeah, and uh, he was uh, Kuiper and uh, the color commentator Dallas Braden. They were uh, they were just talking to the camera, talking about fun stuff they did before the game while they were in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And this is the clip. <sighs> We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. Wait, quite the slip up. He might, de- he went to say Negro League? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. We had a phenomenal day oh, today. Boy. Nigger League Museum and Arthur Bryant's Barbecue. Oh. Brutal. Obviously, he had no idea he said it. He no. Had a big smile on his face as he kept going. It's just, it's got to happen. I mean, Negro, N word, like, it's just going to. Yeah. No yeah. One, yeah. Out of those two guys, though, but the other yeah. guy looked like a January 6er. Yeah, it came from the, the, guy, the yeah. guy you're least expecting. The, guy, yeah. the other guy looked like either a January 6er or the guy who does the Scott's Lawn fertilizer commercial, the scariest red bearded man yeah. in the world. 100%. Just gets out there and starts yelling at dandelions. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're so, going to end you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. But now, do we. Here's here's my whole thing, and and this is a this is a an issue, um, but it's kind of a two way street. For me, motivation is everything all the time. It's always about motivation, it, yeah, it, intention, it yeah, and yeah, intention and motivation. Um, so obviously he screwed up, but then other people would go, well, that's what he's thinking, or or he must say that all the time. It was so natural for him oh, to say it, like yeah. It, Right. Yeah. So, yes. But I mean, 
Get, but also, like you got. I, I wouldn't even want to put myself into that position. Like if somebody said, what do you want to do all day? You want to go to the Negro League Museum or you want to get some soft swirl ice cream? I'd be like, just get the soft <laughs> swirl. Just, yeah. I, I didn't want to where, where, where black and white is together. Right. The next, right. Yeah. That That's guy's right. That guy's a vanilla guy. I can tell. I looked into his eyes. <laughs> so and maybe it's a vanilla he's swirl. Like, he went to the museum. Maybe he saw the word in a bunch of places yeah, in the yeah, museum because it's like a history. Could have been the signs that were held up in the stands back in the day when Jackie Robinson right. started playing. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. Okay, so anyway, that aired and then in the sixth inning, I don't know when the, those initial comments took place, but in the sixth in the inning, he apologized on air. So we, oh, can, we can watch that. You know the worst part? I'll tell you the worst part of life, which has happened to me a few times and ended up happening to me with The Tonight Show and uh, Queen Latifah and Lyman and uh, Lyman Dykes and uh, it, was a, it was a long story, but the worst... Let me tell you the worst part of life. It's it's the it's the dawning of life, the dawning of the information, like the dawning of the part. You know, like I've always said, like the worst part about getting your car stolen, it's not when you know your car is stolen, because when you know your car is stolen, you you snap into something. You go like, oh, I got to call an insurance company. Oh, I got to call my wife. Oh, oh, what was in the car? Oh shit. Okay, I'm insured. I see. Who do I call first? I'll call the cops, and then I'll call the insurance company. You're like in mode. And then moments before that, you just go like, I thought I parked my car under this sycamore tree. How come? How is it? That's not the way. The, the worst part of life is when it dawns on you. Like when you go, I parked my car right here because I remember that the, there was a... Sh- yeah, like that moment, that moment, and there's some point. So this guy's just sailing through the show, and then yeah. like at some point during a commercial break between the fifth and the sixth inning, like somebody comes up, going, "Did did did you know what you said?" And the, your first thing is just denial. It's like I didn't say no. I said Negro League. I didn't say that. And then they, and then they go, uh, you, "I'm going to show you the tape." That's the Don. Yeah, oh. that's a Don moment. That that, yeah. that moment oh. of like when they go. You, I got to oh, no. show you the tape yeah, because yeah. your first thing is so no. I I wouldn't say that. I didn't say that. No. It, let me show you the tape. <laughs> that's that's the dawning moment. That's oh, well, people. I mean, I remember there was a, a very um, no pun intended off color comment that was said about Allen Iverson on CBS when he played for Georgetown. You know, mm-hmm. he was unbelievable. Um, I mean, one of my favorite players of Same all time. Good in college. What's up? You're saying he was good in college? Yeah. Oh, I know that. I know he was, that it was is. awesome. He was so he <laughs> thought he blossomed as a pro. <laughs> um, I never saw him play pro. Oh, okay. no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but I loved him at, at, at Georgetown. He was just awesome. And he was so athletic. And we'd never seen a guy with that ball handling ability, I feel like, in the modern game. And there was one game on a Sunday on CBS, I believe. I hope I'm getting this right. Where he went through, I think it was Syracuse, like three or four guys. And he got bumped by all of them. And he still made the layup. I mean, it's an unbelievable highlight. And I'm almost positive that the announcer said, "Wow, that is one tough monkey," oh, yeah. on air. And then, and then he was like, "No, I just meant that he was tough." And I and the other guys like sort of helping, but not taking his side in case mm-hmm. the ship's going down. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, "Oh my lord!" Yeah. yeah. Howard Cosell called uh, Washington then Redskins wide out a little monkey and got into trouble Oof. Yeah. back Can't a million that. years ago. Oof. But he had a pretty. He had a pretty plausible explanation. He said he calls all his grandkids little monkeys. Because they just like run around. Oh, like, okay. yeah, it was the way perfectly the guy... innocent. Uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway. But here's the apology. Oh, boy. See how the Scots guy. See how, see, see. He's like, as soon as it went dead, he was like, did you just realize what you just said? <laughs> The Scots turf. We're gonna guy. be fired. <laughs> You're gonna be gone like a dandelion here in a second. He goes, "What did I say?" He goes, "You know what you said." The Scots turf builder guy's the scariest guy on TV. I don't know if he's a pro wrestler. I don't know where this guy came from. I don't know if he's a Jew from New York, the hills of Hagestown. I I don't know who that actor is, but he's scaring the shit out of yeah. me. Have you guys yeah, the seen guy who plays this guy? Tormund on Game of Thrones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. is. He's oh. scaring the shit out of weeds. Yeah. All right. Here's the apology. Welcome back to Coppin Stadium. I just wanted to, a little bit earlier in the show, I said something didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to, um, and I just wanted to apologize if if it uh, if it sounded different than I meant it. 
to be said. And like I said, I just Oof. wanted to apologize for that. Oof. You don't have a lot of time. Loriano is the hitter. He takes no. the strike. Yeah. What if he then he ever. said it again? <laughs> mm. Like if it just slipped out again. Yeah. I mean, that was not a very good apology. It wasn't. I, I mean, mean, come on. It may on. have been still been in shock. I don't know. Or just uh, you guys might have heard it differently than I wanted it to be. Like, yeah. what, what are you, are you talking doing? about? Get your PR team in here. No shit. Yeah. Not good, dude. So, so he got fired. Well, yeah. So there was a weeks long investigation. <laughs> An investigation. Yeah. And well, here's the thing. The A's say that the decision to fire him was based on, quote, a variety of factors, including information uncovered in the internal review. So I wonder if they went through text messages or like things like that that he had maybe had in print that they mm. could find. I think they just say that. His email yeah. is his name at nword.com. <laughs> right. He's like, that's going to bite you. It cuts back yeah, to a flashback in college. Don't do that. Don't that's going to bite that. you in the ass. He goes, no way, buddy. <laughs> Not at all. I'm yeah. I, My I, band's going to make it. <laughs> I think they pad it and say there's other stuff they found. But also, when you go back and review, anybody always finds stuff. This is always stuff. Right. It's impossible. Do you think it should be allowed to be used against them? I, okay. I don't I don't like mistakes being used against people, and he made a mistake, and we just got to move on. He was the, the I, just I reminder, like he's it. the announcer for two decades. Did yeah. he do any other announcement or apology, or that was the only one? That's the only one I was able to Oof. find. I'm sure he's done more. Meanwhile, the Dodgers are doing trans inclusion night or whatever their yeah. stupid well, they, well, they, <laughs> they, Their they, fans are all drunken Mexicans. I don't have no idea why they do Pride Night at Dodger Stadium. The, all all they have is drunken Mexicans. Well, they have that's, a sponsor, and I think it was yeah, it was like a pro LGBT yeah. thing. And then they stepped away, going, "Oh, you know, actually, we didn't mean to do that." And then they got more backlash, and they came yeah. back. Well, that's like, actually I'm, yeah, they're yeah, they're cool with us. They were well, going to see the 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 the, the, uh, the pushback from our fans. Yeah, is what they said. And Nobody like, pushed back. I was like, yeah, who is? I mean, no, they were doing Pride Night, and then they excluded a group from Pride Night, right. which is these trans nuns. Yeah, who are basically. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wrap my head around these people. First off, they're the most fucked up, angry people on the planet. Nobody hates their dads nuns. more than the trans <laughs> nuns group. They do nothing. It's just a bunch of dudes who are either got molested by a priest or are angry at their stepdad for molesting them. That 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 that's all this. But and what's is, the name of that group? I don't know what the name of the. Group it's got to be like none your business, right? <laughs> it, like if you don't have that, you're, you're leaving money they, on the they, table. They, they, but they. And they're making a mockery of Christianity, but nobody seems to care about that. Although they should try it against Islam. Step on up, trans guys. Let's do a trans group against Islam. See, mock Islam. Just see all come, that, all see come dressed works. as Muhammad. Yeah, just do that. Yeah, the just sisters, do trans Muhammad. See how that works out for you. They're the uh, sisters of perpetual indulgence. Right. So they got excluded, and then they made a beef, and then... The Dodgers did the, we listened to the fans, except for no fans once tranny nuns mincing about the third baseline. But now they're back. Yeah, they let them all fuck themselves. Let let all, Bud, Bud Light, you guys can do it. Ford, you guys can do it with your gay pickup truck. Just do it all. Just fucking torpedo your own franchises. Go ahead. The Dodgers said that uh, it provided, that this, this thing provided them an opportunity to, quote, better educate ourselves. Find ways to strengthen the ties that bind and use With our tranny nuns to support all our fans who make up the diversity of the Dodgers family. Yeah, these people don't stand for anything except for the, except for hating everything. That's it. I just I, I've been to a lot of Dodgers games. I, I'm trying to think of I don't I don't even read. I guess I don't see any groups going. You I just see a bunch like, of drunk where, fans. Where's the tranny nuns? I don't see anything. I yeah, mean, I've walked into the stadium, not spotted a tranny nun in the beer line, and just left. You're like, this is no place for me. <laughs> yeah, not, not not me and my children. Not in my America. I need, and... I need I need crazy guys dressed up as tranny nuns. Otherwise, I'm out. <laughs> With weird sparkle paint on their face. No one really makes fun of all these people like they should. These, these they're all damaged goods. They're all a fucking mess. Any 53 year old guy spray painting his face like Kiss, putting on the nun, <laughs> putting on the uh, yeah, are they, flying nun. So they dress frock. like nuns, and they have what else is about them? That's just it. They're just in. Well, yeah, they're, they're in nun face. They hate Christianity. Is basically what they do. Right. Yeah. So now, uh, now Dodgers are getting it from the Catholic groups. Good. So just stop you having group you nights of everything. Every, Get back to yeah. fucking bat night and pillow night. <laughs> yeah. 
And um, steroid night. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are, those are that's a good one too. So the um, sponsored by juice companies. Since we're talking about apologies, let's go back to 2020 just because this makes me laugh. But remember Tom Brenneman, who was on the Reds. Also, by the way, this happened in Kansas City as well when he was, he had a hot mic. Mm. Um, but they were like just showing the field, but his mic was still hot, and he called San Francisco one of the quote quote one of the fag capitals of the world. Mm. And um, statistically correct, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, you can say that. And mm-hmm. so they heard it, and this was his apology, and it's just it's such a great call. Well, the best the. All right, let me let me say this. Um, what you need, because I've heard a lot of these apologies. Um, what you need to do is pre-record four apologies. You have a black community apology. You have a general people outside of the white ethnicity one that'll cover for that. You have a, a gay one. And uh, you have one like, the, the, we, no one will demand it, but if you made fun of a religion or something like that, you just have them canned. You I mean, they're like 15 seconds. You've got your script done. There's no ambling or mumbling. Like if some people heard certain things that may have been different than the things where I was thinking, then maybe that, that's just, just something. And then you just roll it. Like when the first day on the job, you show up a half hour early, sit down and lay it. Lay it down because the problem with the play by play guys, they have to shoehorn their apology in in between a commercial break and the beginning of the inning. So they go, if I've offended anybody of That's the LGBT what I thought it was gonna be. community, uh, from the bottom of my heart, Sanchez goes into the stretch, he takes a look over first base. Now he's walking over to first base. If I've hurt any of the feelings, my daughter is a member of the trans of the trans community. Okay, he's taking a look. Three and one. I thought that's <laughs> what it was going to be. Three and yeah. one offering. It's kind of heading like, that way, they, right? They, they yeah. have to go right into the fucking play by play, which fucks up the yeah. Well, the also, I'm glad you're talking about that because this has to be what happens. This right? is what happens. Well, all he goes, yeah, he goes. Um, I'm sorry if I apologize to you. No balls, uh-huh. all strike. And then you're like, what is he apologizing, or is he talking about the game? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You're, but also, you got to think about the amount because I totally agree with you. The dawning on something right. that it's like right away he, they go to commercial or whatever. Maybe it's a short commercial, you know, and then because obviously they speed up the game so much more now mm-hmm. that it's like, okay, you just said this on air. We're about to come back. You have to shoot. Por- shoehorn it in for like five seconds, come up with something immediately. PR didn't help him right. and get back to the game before the pitch comes out. Right. Yeah. So so Impossible. he just comes off insincere like an asshole. Right. But it's it's the shock from the dawning. Like I mean I've yeah. had that have you guys ever just texted the wrong person like, oh man, Julie's being such a bitch and right. sent to Julie. Right. Oh fuck. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, here's Tom. I sent Julie texts that said Chris is a douche. <laughs> I get those texts from you all the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, different Chris. <laughs> All right, here's Tom Brenneman in 2020. It's great. I can't tell you how much I say from the bottom of my heart. I'm so very, very sorry. I pride myself and think of myself as a a man of faith. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, <laughs> oh it will be a home run. Get a home run. <laughs> Poor guy so couldn't have just it taken a pitch. Ball game. I don't know if I'm going to be putting on this headset again. Yeah, oh. He goes on longer. But oh, hey, listen, man. that is that is smoten by God. At least it wasn't the top of the inning. From the time he started his apology to the guy hit a round tripper was less than four seconds. Oh, I mean, they, you just want him to take ball low, you know, ball too low or whatever, and then you can get on with your apology. It's mm-hmm. going to take a while. And also, the real victim here is not the gay community of San Francisco. They know who they are. The real victim is the guy who hits the home run. Well, he that could have been his first home run, a major league <laughs> home run or whatever, and he's got a guy apologizing to the gays. Yeah. Well, that's what happens off mic. Like, he thinks it's off again, and he goes, are you fucking kidding me? That guy had been throwing balls all night, and he hasn't <laughs> hit. And then the one goddamn time I have to apologize, like, you're still on. He goes, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, yeah, just wait till like, the relief pitchers warm it up or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that's a, a classic clip. Super famous on the internet out. In yeah, yeah I love it. The, uh, how awkward it I is. I love how his, the, the best part about him is his timber's the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to apologize, and I'm never in uh, ball out to left field, and you know it's yeah. like it's the same. That's just yeah, he's just that's his broadcasting voice, yeah. and he knows nothing else now. But, but also the um, he, his apology was weird too. It's like I want to apologize for uh, to everybody who to the men who signed my paychecks. Uh, oh, that was really? a weird. That was Oof. a weird. Line. Uh, he's cutting that. He's cutting right, 
cut into the quick though. That's who that's who he needs to mm, that's get who on needs his good side. Did the he almighty get dollar. So he got sent to the Roberto Clemente League in Puerto Rico to call their games. He did get canned. So that's what he did. He was doing the Roberto Clemente League in Puerto Rico. And then uh, uh, a streaming service who streams high school games in the country hired oh, him. Wow. So yeah. Wow. Quite the wow. He's just doing clan games now. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the clan league. <laughs> Pretty much. Everyone's wearing white. Everyone's the home team. Yeah, I can't differentiate the teams. Um, All right, so let's go now to uh, another story in Washington, D.C. So the words or the word U-Haul was trending last night. U-Haul. U-Haul. And I I was wondering what happened. So a 19-year-old Missouri man accused of driving a U-Haul truck into a security barrier at a park across from the White House he made incriminating statements that led investigators to believe that he was seeking to harm the president, mm. officials uh, said Tuesday. Um, so this was shortly before 10 p.m. last night. He was just ramming into a barrier at this park. Um, so he, the, the truck was seized and they found a Nazi flag mm. in it. And uh, yeah, so and uh, so the charges against him. By the way, he's an Indian guy, like an Indian teen from Missouri. Um well, Missouri, like American Indian or Eastern no, Indian? No, Eastern Indian. Yeah, I, I would have gone with Eastern, but you said Missouri, and it made me think right, maybe. Right, it's, re- it's weird. It's just weird already. So, well, look, there's a lot of, there's plausible deniability to the Nazi flag in the U-Haul because you go, uh, maybe they just moved out. You know, Hitler Youth was like the last person to rent it. Like, you found that in Grandma's attic. Yeah. That was over the cab. I can ch- I didn't search the cube truck right, before can, I yeah. rented it. That would be it. amazing that if that was there. the only thing in there. Yeah. There's nothing else in the U-Haul except a Nazi flag. Well, right. they, they like the guy who rented the truck oh, sure. before was a neo-Nazi. Yeah, I didn't yeah. check the back. Like, had it folded up in the back of Grandma's attic yeah. up there. Looked empty. Just yeah, glanced it. It me. looked empty. I thought that was a security blanket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was a pack. Was a, a packing, a packing blanket. blanket. Yeah, yeah. Blanket. I, what were you packing? Burning crosses. <laughs> oh, okay, buddy. So uh, the charges against him are for allegedly quote threatening to kill, kidnap, inflict harm on a president, vice president, or family member at the park across the street. Yeah. Also charged with assault with a dangerous weapon, and the dangerous weapon is the truck because there were no weapons or explosives in the truck. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so that's- did he drive it out from Indiana? Uh, from or Missouri, Missouri, uh, unclear. I don't. I don't know. They, they're still trying to figure out the exact motive. But I guess it'd yeah. be funny renting it in Missouri. Going, uh, I'm going to D.C. and they're like, every U-Haul is leaving D.C. and going <laughs> somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> like that's where they. That should have been the tell. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're Wait, Missouri rent? license plate. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm going to rent a U-Haul in Texas and drive it to California. Hold on, buddy. <laughs> You're trying to try to kill the governor? Like, we've not rented any U-Hauls. There's nobody moving into D.C. Everyone's moving out of D.C. So that should have been, that's on the, the U-Haul company who rented it. That that should have been a flag. Yeah. That's essentially like saying, that, I want to buy one, I'm buying a one-way ticket. Remember when the airlines would go like, no two-way ticket? So no. I, had, I had that joke about Southwest. By the way, there was a flag, a red flag. Yeah, it was there an, was. It was a Nazi flag. A no, Nazi no, but, red um, flag. But uh, I always say that about, about Southwest Airlines, I'm like, because they have the two check bags for pre, free policy, you know? Yeah. I go, I, I don't trust that many people get it on an airline without luggage. That's terrorism behavior. Right. Right. <laughs> like if you saw somebody who was really dressed up and then they were like, had no luggage, I'm like, Oh man, What's that bitch about on? to go see Allah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, nobody was injured by the way. And yeah, so I guess the, uh, the guy, he made threatening statements about the white house at the scene, but oh, was quickly just, detained. I, I, you know, my thought three times a day now is just, oh, thank God he's not white. Because he's white, then it's more Nazis oh, of course. and white great... supremacy and the biggest problem and terrorist threats and then all the view bitches would make right. a big deal over it. And now it's now now the good he's Indian. Yeah, good. It'll never be discussed. Well, it's also worth worth uh, thinking about too. Is okay. He's 19 years old, so he was 11 when Trump was elected. So about half his life, he's known these like crazy culture wars, and that's all mm. he knows. So I, be- I wonder like what this next generation is going to be doing because they only know how hostile everybody's been yeah. for the last decade. Yeah, I still don't know what his plan was. He's going to I don't a park either. across the street. Trying to Does run Biden to frequent that park? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know, but his his uh, exact whereabouts at the time of the incident were unclear. 
Yeah. What time was it? Uh, uh, look, a little if, under, a little before 10 p.m. If the street lights were on, he was, asleep. A, he was asleep. Biden's asleep. Yeah. Biden's asleep, bro. <laughs> He's definitely asleep. Now, if you were telling me that he was attacking an IHOP at 4 p.m., I'm like, Mr. President, we have to get out of here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's take a break and we'll get in the next story. All right. Let me tell you about Angie. Homeowners, you know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. Meter Father's Day just around the corner and I know the perfect gift. Just the one he needs. Meter. Sleek. Smart meat thermometer that guarantees the perfect cook every time. And it's so nice because you don't have to stand over the barbecue the whole time. You're free. You can even make a beer run, hit the store. Yep. You don't have to keep an eye on the food. It keeps an eye for you. So you'll have juicier chicken, mouthwatering steak, uh, brisket. It's all right off the grill or even out of the oven. Comes with cloud service for limitless range. Use in a grill, smoker, oven, air fryer, rotisserie, sous vide, whatever. It's all good with meter and enjoy your cookouts without being smoked to death, standing over the barbecue yourself. It's a perfect gift for dad or anyone in your life to up their barbecue game. It's meter, right, Dawson? Shop now on meter.com for a limited deal. A special Father's Day engraved meter bundled with some other awesome accessories. Barbecue season is coming up. Get dad grilling and shop at M-E-A-T-E-R dot com. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number 65, eaten at a Waffle House. Just one of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Oh, Jonathan Kite is here. Right. Something has been pissing me off all day since uh, I was talking to Dr. Drew about it. Uh, I was watching. My favorite thing to do is to watch montages on all takes COVID, mostly the ladies from The View, governors of all blue states, mayors of all blue states, anyone on CNN or MSNBC just being wrong in perpetuity. But it's not that they're wrong. It's how how much certitude they have about it and how they're smacking their fists on tail. Of, you of get this vaccine. You will there. not get it. You people that don't get it are killing people. All the fuck. Every Every talking head on CNN, every every expert, every doctor, everyone, and there's like a 12 minute montage I retweeted, but it is it is so awesome to watch all these fuckers being wrong over and over again. But then I was thinking there was one, <clears throat> there was one, and by the way, you should share this. You should make fun of these people all you can <laughs> until you're fucking blue in the face of what they tried to do to you. Because you watch these montages. They weren't going, oh, look, it's your body. It's your decision. They were like, you shouldn't be allowed to go to work. You shouldn't be allowed to travel. You shouldn't be allowed in hospitals. Like, they were fucking horrible. Horrible. But it struck me that one of the montages was the ladies from The View And they're interviewing a woman who I guess used to be on The View. And she was like a doctor. And she goes, well, I got it. So I got natural immunity now. So I don't need to take the vax. And I think the risk of uh, the vax is higher than getting it. Because I have natural immunity, I'm going to use natural immunity. They lied about natural immunity and Fauci lied. He didn't lie. When smart people play stupid, understand they're lying. Mm Mm-hmm. When, when Fauci was like, oh, natural immunity, we don't, we don't really know how effective it is. All right, now he's lying. So when smart people don't know things, 
then assume they're they're lying. But so she I was, said this on the View. I was watching the View ladies who wanted her canceled, and I was just watch it. But but here's what I here's what I want to say about the View. Those yentas get up there every single day with as much confidence, gusto, self assurance, and uh, uh, bravado as possible, <laughs> and then are wrong about everything. But think about the view. The view, or we'll watch the clip and then I'll tell you <laughs> what's crazy about the view. All right. It just isn't. But you made a conscious decision not to get the vaccine. I also have natural immunity. So for me, personally, this vaccine poses a greater risk than a benefit. I'm also not a risk to any of you. Let's look at the science. So we see that the natural infection is given greater protection or slightly greater protection than vaccination. This is a vaccine that was created to prevent severity of disease and to prevent hospitalizations. But the vaccine does not prevent you from getting COVID and does not prevent you from transmitting COVID. Oh my COVID. goodness. Reality, oh, no, we have that's seen that. not so. No. Come on. No, You've been at Fox TV too long. have to enjoy. I just so really again, don't think that we again, should allow sunny. this kind of misinformation. Again. All right. It's okay. misinformation to be right about shit. Joy but, and right. Sunny, not happy. But let me just say this about The View. Uh, Everything they said about COVID was wrong. Everything they said was wrong. Six foot distancing doesn't exist. Mass didn't work. Vaccine didn't do any of the shit they said it was going to do. Schools shouldn't have been closed. Everything they said was wrong. Every motherfucking thing that came out of those Yenta's mouths were wrong. But that was only about two and a half years of being wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget COVID came right on the heels of Russian collusion and the Steele dossier and Hillary Clinton paying for the Steele dossier and all the misinformation that came from that. So they had three years of being wrong about Russian collusion and Trump yeah. and Steele dossier and the CIA and the FBI. They had three years being wrong that bumped right into, they took a little break. The Steele dossier dropped <laughs> in September 2016. Uh-huh. They were wrong. I can't remember, Ben, when the uh, Mueller's findings came out that said it wasn't a thing. But they were wrong for about three years. They took a little break before COVID, but only like four months. And then they were wrong about COVID. So the ladies from The View, the two biggest stories in America, or the the two most covered stories that they did for a six-year period, they were 100% fucking wrong about all of it for six years, you idiots. Why are you watching these bitches? Yeah, Steel dossier, uh, Russian collusion, uh, Trump-Russia collusion, and COVID are the two stories they covered the most. They were 100% wrong about all of it. So why are you watching them? And the other question... The Mueller report was in April 2019, so it was about three years from the dossier to then. And the April 2019 or the May 2019, they took a little break until the end of 2019. Then COVID came in, and then they got right back on the wrong train and took it in the wrong fucking direction. So who is listening to these people, and where do they get the motherfucking certitude? Then they show up the following Monday. It's like, all right, we're 100% wrong about Russian collusion. We're 100% wrong, although they never think they are, about uh, COVID. And now what is the next thing we're going to launch into with more self-assurance than anybody's ever spoken with? Well, what you want, I mean, the way that we, like, Americans consume media these days is we want to, we want that to happen. We want that to be true. And that's why we watch it, because we want I, that. I get it. But you want to listen to people that are wrong. Of course. I, that I doesn't matter. No, that doesn't that's matter That's what anymore. I did during COVID. I was like, I'm going to find everyone who got banned. Yeah. Everybody who got deplatformed. I'm not talking about Joe Sixpack, who's at a tractor pull. I'm talking about decorated scientists who were deplatformed for opinions they had, mm-hmm. and I'll just do what they say. Not what the Yentas are saying. Well, I can't say anything because I'm on my third interview to replace Joe Joy Behar at The View. Mm. Oh, I'm I hope you bringing some sense oh, to God. daytime TV. If they ever get tired of being wrong. That's a six-year run of being wrong they right. just had. But now awesome. is this but do are we blaming them or are we blaming the audience? I mean are, are, is there how big is their audience that they're still on air? Like the producers <laughs> like they I believe their audience solely consists 
of the people that are in the studio audience and people like me who want to make fun of them for being wrong. <laughs> I don't think there are any other fans. A lot of their viewership is of you, yeah. Yeah, it's really just people like me wanting to fucking the Nielsen make fun of them. The ratings just say Corolla. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're just wanting to make fun of them. Bro, being this wrong. is the biggest retweet they've ever gotten. That's right. Ugh. No, but you, you see it like there's some funny clips of them, just in, not even to do with COVID or with uh, collusion, but just where they won't. Like they have their their agenda, and then they they push it on the guest. Yeah, like even if the guest is there, like promoting something fun. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of clips. Oh, where they, they were, were just like they were hitting on Liam Neeson, shoving. Oh, they were. Yeah, because of what he said about uh, about the baseball bat going out. No, they just he just showed up. Liam Neeson showed up. Oh, you didn't see this, no. Liam? Oh I, my! I must have blacked out for a second. Find so. the clip. I was on my 10th pint of Guinness. Controversial. <laughs> About. I was drinking with the Scotsman. Five <laughs> weeks ago. Oh, this was five weeks ago? No, I didn't see this. Recent. He went on to promote, you know, Taken 16 or something. And they started, they were hitting on him. And he was like kind of uncomfortable. And he yeah, so it, he later on gave an interview. It was like unprofessional. Unprofessional. Uncomfortable. I wouldn't fuck any of you. Yeah, that's right. He's. He uh, said that he was uncomfortable during yeah. the interview. His his wife died in a skiing accident. May she rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. we have it. So I here's think. him detailing that interview. Oh, yeah. I guess you haven't been here in a while. Oh, yeah. time, and it was the other studio. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a really long time. We talk side. about you oh, so yeah. much, I feel like you've been here. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh -huh. no, uh, no, you talk about it right. so much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blow my cover. Joy wants to get taken by you. <laughs> <laughs> I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Dude. So. Liam. Whoa. Oh, you run it. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's hear a statement about it. Oh, that, that's the whole point. That wasn't even the bad part. She was like sniffing him and shit. Liam tells the mag that prior to his sit down, he was in the dressing room watching the ladies talk about gun violence in America. During the break, he says he went on stage and praised them for having such an important discussion. It's not about winning over people. It's about telling as much of the truth as we have. But when it was time for his segment, things took a turn. It's no secret uh, <laughs> that Joy thinks you're oh, the hottest and the greatest <laughs> ever. <laughs> Was any doubt? Yes. We have a few times she brought you up over the years. I think we have some video. Oh, have you seen this? I would just like to have my ashes sprinkled over Liam Neeson. <laughs> no. Bring Liam Neeson right now. Are those kidnapping movies that he does get me so aroused? I can't even. Oh. Get to <laughs> It's just all this BS with Joy and Liam Neeson and having a crush. And I've known Whoopi for years and Joy a little bit, but I just wasn't impressed. I'm uncomfortable in those situations, you know? Oh, I like that. So, Liam, you get hit on. Well, I wasn't expecting it. I thought we were going to talk about something light, like gun control. <laughs> right. And they're hitting on you and your widower. I, I was there to promote a movie. I wasn't there to uh, promote a movie that uh, Joy has uh, repeatedly emailed me to make a film with her. Don't you think we could do better in the English language for a description of a guy who loses his wife? You know, we have widow. That works. You know what I mean? The uh, husband died. And then we go, well, what happens when the wife dies? And you go, widow. Er. Er. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't sound that creative. Like, come up with a new name. I've got it. Mr. Widow. Mr. Widow. That oh, sounds like a Liam that, Neeson movie. That's a Robin Williams movie. <laughs> ho ho, Mr. Widow. <laughs> <laughs> ho ho, I was out there and I said, hey, where's this guy going? And I said, hey, man, don't follow me down the stairs. And he goes, but he did, but he did follow me down the stairs. So I was like, hey, man, let's do this. It just seems really lazy to just go, Widow. Er. Er. <laughs> widow. Er. Trump. Yeah. Widow. Er. Yeah. All right. What else? Anyway, well, I knew there was yeah. some, something with the view and. And, uh, and Liam. I do love Liam Neeson. He's the best. He is, man. He's a serious man. I, I, I th you know what? They're, they're he is a little too serious. Like, all right, they're doing the a naked Yentas gun remake on you, huh? They're doing a naked gun remake. Are you shitting me? And he's playing Frank Drebin. I'm watching the Bro, shit out of, of that. Of course, let's go. Let's go tonight, dude. That Camp out. First ten, in line. Five months or five years ahead of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny. We're in on the joke. Um, yeah, dude, Liam. I mean, Naked Gun's one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, that's great. I love that movie. All right. What else have we got? Oh, let's talk some, let's talk about bad roommates. 
Mm. So this first story I have, this is out of Kentucky. A man was arrested. Um, police say he shot his roommate in an argument over the final hot pocket in their home. So, mm. yeah, this guy, uh, his roommate had eaten the last hot pocket, so he started throwing tiles at him. Mm. And then things escalated, so the, the roommate just, uh, tries to leave. The How guy does gets, throwing tiles work? I don't know. They must have had some loose tiles. Maybe <laughs> I just imagine him t- ripping them out of the ground. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, went full Kool-Aid on the backsplash. Like yeah. Chinese stars. Just like, yeah. <laughs> so, so the guy gets a gun as his roommate's trying to leave and shoots him in the butt. Mm. Uh, so the, the victim helped uh, got help a few blocks away, non-life-threatening injuries, and the uh, the shooter was arrested about four hours later. I'd be the worst cop or paramedic ever because it'd be like, what happened? My roommate shot me for eating the last Hot Pocket. Oh, man. Where did he shoot you? Who? In my Hot Pocket. <laughs> but whose Hot Pocket was it? Yeah, right. <laughs> They'd yeah. be like, well, it was his, but... Oh, well, then you probably shouldn't have taken it. Like, I, I could never be a cop because that's that's where every conversation would go. I mean, it was his uh, hot. Look, we wouldn't be here now if you. I can't help it. I'm so stoned. His fucking hot pockets. <laughs> like, you did. I'm sure you're his. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I miss this. You're always a let him go cop. Yeah, let him go. I'm the let him go. <laughs> let him play. <laughs> I'd be the worst DUI cop ever. I'd just be like, okay, man. Come listen, on, man. Just take side street. <laughs> what are you, Pomona? Yeah, you could take side streets from here to Pomona. It's going to take a while. Here, but. give me your Google. <laughs> yeah. Officer Sir Wilson, we're seeing your quota. You have zero tickets, but 300 warnings? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the guy was a Christmas party. That's the Fucking movie, Fair Warning. just left him. Ah. Yeah. So, so that was one roommate story out of Kentucky, and then there's another one out of Lake Forest. Um, so video... Showed. Right, you know, I was thinking to myself, like, why are roommates always bad? Because mm-hmm. I've had many a bad roommate. Yeah, and it's like, of course they're bad. They're people who need roommates. You know, they're like, especially once you crack thirty, this guy, and you're still shopping for roommates. Like, the worst roommates ever are the fifty-two-year-old roommates because it's not a coincidence that. They're all fucked up roommates. You are fishing from a pond that has nothing but fucked up fish in it. Because when you're old and you need a roommate, it just means you're junkie, alcoholic, abusive husband, you know, whatever. Nothing went right. My friend had a a roommate and um, the woman was older and she had dogs and just let them shit all over the house. The best roommates are people who don't need roommates. Absolutely. You know, Matt Damon would make a fucking killer roommate. I would love to yeah. live with like, Matt where Damon. where is your roommate now? He's in Prague shooting and won't be back for four months. I fucked on his bed last night. You want to watch me? <laughs> like, I mean, he'd live in a big house. He'd never be around. When he did come back, you could watch his dailies and shit, you know? Yeah, man. It'd be Born Supremacy watch 5. Watch the you know? Born Supremacy and have him do the audio commentary in the room. The best. The best people don't need roommates. That's it. And the worst people need roommates. And that's why roommates, when you're like 19, are okay because everyone needs a roommate when they're 19. Anything over 35, watch out. Well, that's a bad person. The guy who shot his roommate for taking the last hot pocket, age 64. Oh, perfect. Was it with a musket? <laughs> <laughs> Stay right there. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Yeah. No, don't hold on. <laughs> Let me get my flint, my powder. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a there's another story. Um, this this guy this this was uh, pretty recently, a couple of days ago. This was uh, the in Lake Forest. A guy crashed his car into a house, got out of the car, and began chasing his roommates with a pickaxe. Wow. There's video. There's security footage of this. That's um, more of a it, younger man's sport. Yeah. Go ahead. You can just play it on me. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this so is him trying yeah, to so break yeah. into the house. So he's trying to break into the house. Just breaks the door in broad daylight. Yeah, bro- mm. and grab, goes pickaxe. to the backyard, grabs a pickaxe. His roommate's in. He's got a knife. It's too. actually the owner too, the um, who who has the roommate. So he's in that room, and this guy is just trying to break in, and he's well, like, well, "I'm going to die now." Use the pickaxe to break in. Which he, is, he he figures oh, that he out. Here's yeah. Johnny. He should use the broad side of the yeah, pickaxe yeah. to take the knob off. He, he's drunk, right? He, oh, yeah, right. he looks like he's just hitting it with a handle. He's not doing a good pickaxe. What job. was his? It, what was the reason? What was his intention? They just uh, the deputies, based on the statement and his behavior, just believe he is under the influence of some substance. Yeah, yeah like look at his car. Like there's a. 
Jesus yeah. Christ. Up. This is, yeah, here's Johnny. You need solid corridors. <laughs> you need solid corridors. <laughs> you need a solid... Oh, yeah, yeah, this guy's drunk. Yeah, I mean, he drove this car hard yeah. into, this, into this house. This isn't a scene from Fast and Furious? Man, he's up on two wheels. Are you excited for Fast and Furious? Did you? You're gonna. It's out now. I right? saw it last night. You saw did. it last night. Both of together. That's right. You didn't yeah. Call me. Come on, dude. Best buds. Yeah, we're seeing that, and we're seeing uh, uh, Naked Liam Gun together. Yeah. yeah, Naked Gun. Uh, it's good. It's fun. It's everything. The, the The only part that they're starting to get wrong is Vin Diesel. Vin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Vin Diesel's car his dodge charger and or challenger i can never remember his car has turned into a superhero which is he used to mm -hmm. use his car like a sort of a tool now his car is a character in the movie and it has super powers yeah it takes so, a ton of bullets we're he's like impact. oh he's like i'm gonna drive off the back of this plane, uh, there's a you know, C-130 Hercules. Just get me somewhere about 80 feet over the highway, and I'll just drive it out of the back. <laughs> That's he, momentum he, will take. He it just from drives there. out of the back of it, lands. And by the way, on a truck <clears throat> or in a car. That's what breaks the impact. Remember oh, when he's yeah, flying yeah, out the yeah. back, and right. it's fine to drive. And then he's just driving down <laughs> dams and oh, driving up sides of cliffs. Like the car has turned into a superhero. And maybe I just know too much about suspension, but yeah. I mean, every half the people who live in California have had their suspension fucked up by a pothole, like popped a tire, ding dinged a rim, had a tie rod pop off. Fucked Mine up the did from from a pothole. Well, literally, that's what the guy said. He goes, "You must have just hit something from and from a three inch deep pothole." He's jumping out. He's firing the car off of dams and off of Dude. <laughs> off of transport planes and stuff like that. It just hits the ground. It's it's that it's that thing. It's like it's kind of the Dukes of Hazard. Like the Dukes of Hazard would launch their car over the bridge that was out. Right? Yeah. They'd always launch it. They do it in slow motion. Then they'd show the car land in slow motion, and when it landed in slow motion, you'd see the suspension bottom out, the one of the tires toe in, the other one bent weird, just totally slammed on the ground. And then a moment later, they'd pop back into the interior of the uh, day, uh, 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 General Lee, and they were just driving the car. Yeah. So that's what Vin does. Vin drives the car off a cliff, or he'll <laughs> drive down a cliff, or off a cliff, yeah. or whatever. By the way, he's not in a four by. Like he's not <laughs> driving a trophy truck that would be set up for Baja with like eighteen inches worth of suspension travel. He's driving a low slung I was say it's a street car yeah. with like thirty series tires on it. The, the rims would be flat and the suspension would be destroyed. Like he'd just land and have to get out of the car yeah. if he was able to get out of the car. But now the car has taken over it, it has superhuman powers now. Now when he it's 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 Batman's utility belt or, or Superman's cape. Now when he gets in the car, and by the way, his car falls. He, he's in Brazil. He's in Jamaica. He's in London. He's in Prague. Yeah, he's he in Hungary, and he's car. constantly climbing out of his car. I don't know his car. I've been to Europe yeah. without my car. Or Europe and then South America. <laughs> he's like, he's how did he get there? He's his like, cars everywhere. I'll tell you how. <laughs> we, uh, we're doing a crossover with the Transformers. Family. Man, That's what it's about. It's Familia. about, fam it's about mishpucha. Say, it's uh, a, Vin, Vin say, I don't got friends. I got family. Adam, I don't got friends. I got family. Yeah, that's that's. His <laughs> I said, "Here's my." I go, "Here's my impression of Vince uh, of Vin Diesel uh, orgasm." And he goes, uh, uh, "That's how I make more fam." <laughs> <laughs> they referred to a picture of um, Vin. My favorite. I don't know. Makes me laugh. Makes my son laugh every time because we watch them all together. His wedding picture. <laughs> he's in a dress, wife beater. <laughs> I was just saying, God, no sleeves. I knew exactly where you were wedding, going. His wedding picture is the best because he's got his wife beater that he wears in the garage. 
and then he has a dress wife Yo. beater. Oh, which he gets he gets married in a dress <laughs> no wife way. beater. Oh yeah. And they referred to it. And every time I see it, my son starts laughing before I do now because I pointed out to him that Vin is so fucking hardcore with his sleeve None action. None of the that, uh, outfits got dirty last night. None no, of all they never of, get dirty. No. That could have been his wedding wife beater he was wearing in on the dam. But how scotch guarded is it? He he Yeah, he he takes that he takes that thing to the cleaners. But yeah, I always I always laugh that he got what he got married in his wedding his wedding wife Peter. Very classy. Yeah, it's been Simonized. I think the the it was a entertaining as hell movie, but every yeah. did you know I mean, every line in the movie should have been the last line of a scene. Yes. So like everyone has the last line of the scene. Yes. There's no setup, it's all punchline. Yes. So it's like it's just a come to them and they're like gotta go and then Vin's Vin will be like, We gotta get out of here mm. if we wanna stay together as a family. And then you think it's gonna close and then Ludacris is just Yeah, you think it's gonna be credits and then Ludacris goes, You know we're gonna do that. And then you think that should be the end of it. And then Tyrese has one. It's just everyone giving the last line of it's like a Modelo commercial. It's in their contract. We need we need well. That's what I one. said. Everyone because you know when him and the rock got into that whole thing with the punching, mm-hmm. they could only each get punched. 25 times and like oh i didn't know that there was like a huge dispute with the two of them and so they're so they're so uh specific about it and that's the thing is there's less speeches in this one because even when him and jason are on the phone it's like just hang up Mm. don't wait for one more line where he was like (laughs) you ruined my family uh dom toretto i'm gonna ruin yours should be the end of the city goes i'll tell you who's gonna ruin whose family (laughs) and then it's like you think that's the end of it and then he's got one more line and you're like what's just happening right now it was all like you know they go like let's go again let's just go again and like do alts it's like they kept in every alt (laughs) alt. (laughs) (laughs) just every alt (laughs) the other thing that's the other thing that's funny too is they'll they do this in every Fast and Furious movie. They'll they'll do the thing where they jump the car out of the plane, eighty yeah. feet, land on the bridge. They'll do the one where they jump from one side to the bridge to the next side. There was a hit, bust through the guardrail. You know, hit the Nas, have the car wheelie, jump through the next thing. Then they'll do the thing where they like take on the tank and take on the half track. But at some point, they'll be at a cliff. They'll be like on a cliff. And they'll be surrounded by bad guys who are all like standing there holding machine guns with a helicopter over them. And Vin will say to uh, Letty, mm-hmm. he'll go, Yeah, you may want to buckle up. <laughs> and she'll put the harness on. It's like, I would have had that shit on while we're in the airplane. I, I, I got enough reason to put the seat. You're jumping from bridge to bridge. That should have been the first. We thing. took on a tank, we jumped out of an airplane. <laughs> the belt would have been on. While we were yeah. taking off, he, he said that to the guy though. Remember yeah, in the back? Like, then now, they're going, and he finally puts it out. Now and we're going to drive. What are you doing? And he goes, "I'm preparing for what's coming." Yeah, now and we're driving put- down the side of a, <laughs> oh of a. We're driving down the side of a 700 foot dam. Buckle up. Yeah, I was like, "Pops, I had this fucking shit on right when I got in the car, dude." The fact that they don't, it's not Fast and Furious whiplash. <laughs> like it's crazy. They never wear seatbelts until <laughs> we have to. Well. You don't wear seatbelts if you're jumping from bridge to bridge, and you don't wear the seatbelts if you're jumping out of the back of a Hercules airplane onto a highway. It's when you're going building to building in Dubai. or That or was down, amazing, though. That went in Dubai. the side of a bridge. So or, good. That's when you need to put the at least the lap belt on. Well, you don't want to block the wedding uh, undershirt. <laughs> Wife beater. The wife beater. All right, the let's wedding wife beater. So you're saying it wasn't as, let's as realistic. No, as it's wanted. fun. It's, it's, it's always fun. It's fun, but I, I think Jonathan will agree with me that the car cannot have superhero powers. Right. The car is just a car. It's a good car. It has high horsepower. Use it like you would use a car. And then I'll go along with you on some of the things a car couldn't do. But the, it shouldn't be in, imbibed, imbued in something with superhero yeah. powers. What about when Vin Diesel of... lifts the car? Remember what he... Well, he did that in <laughs> Dubai, too. <laughs> yeah, no, he, did, he, like, he did that in Fast. Dude, does he have a seven. roid issue? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, like, that was crazy. Yeah. But it, it's it's fun, man. You're going to love it. I mean, everybody's got... There's, like, some fun pop-ups, and, you know, it's just... I don't know. Yeah. So I, I should have suspension in dis- of disbelief, but I'm just focusing on suspension. Yeah, literally exactly. suspension, yeah. literally yeah. springs, leaf springs, shocks, and bump stops. Yeah, all the suspension components. <laughs> great I, one. arms. Yeah, great mm, one-liners though. 
Yeah, that's all it I'll is. I'll be focusing on those. Yeah. Can't wait. All right. Uh, New York City, Sony Hall, Friday and Saturday. I'm doing stand-up there with my friends. There'll be a great group showing up of stand-ups you love. So I'll see you Friday and I'll see you Saturday, Sony Hall. And the pay-per-view in San Diego, live1.com slash Corolla Live. Brad will be there. Jonathan Kite's got live. He's got a podcast, Kite Club, and then... Live shows coming up Friday, Saturday, Austin, Texas, Sunset Strip Comedy Club. And then he's all over the place. So go to JonathanKiteComedy.com. And until next time, Sam Crawford, Jonathan Kite, and Chris Max Pata saying mahalo. Mahalo.